Hello, we're back. Welcome Hello. back to the Mover and Gonky and Wombat show. The introductions are as follows. Gonky, wait, nope, that's the old one. It's now <laughs> high speed super, internet gonky. Super high super speed. High speed. Don't uh, jinx we it. bring back Wombat with the two books, <laughs> Vengeance Flight and Treason Flight, and he's a certified Mustang driver. Please buy his book. They need to be swapped. Because you, so they're in you order. should. Oh my God. Okay. I'm just saying. I'm just, Attention I'm just to detail. I know you didn't make it. I'm just saying. For sure. <laughs> listen to me. For sure, the appearance of DOD of visual information does not imply or constitute DOD endorsement. Views presented are our own or the guests and do not represent that of the DOD because we're going to talk about aliens and I'm pretty sure somebody's going to be mad. So we're in the mood to stir up some stuff tonight. Yeah, Can we do that? let's just so that's right. that's the welcome. We've got Douglas uh, on the mic in the control room as our producer, Doug. Hello, Douglas. I am prefer chief trunk monkey. <laughs> that goes to what that. we were talking about prior to yeah, coming on. Uh, <laughs> yes, exactly. Anyway, All right, that's so it for <laughs> back to what we're going to talk about. Do you have anything else before we begin, Gonky? About the no. UAPs? Uh, are you? This. Yeah, just do it. I've got it queued up, man. We're ready to this go. Is very interesting. The aliens. The aliens are among us. I've got this broken up into clips. This may take a while, but if you haven't seen this, it's very fascinating. And let's play way uh, to have this conversation which really to the heart of it is about national security and key to the subcommittee's core purpose this is the subcommittee on national security of the oversight committee now our witnesses will testify today that uaps have posed a serious safety threat my name is ryan fobbs graves and i'm a former f-18 pilot with a decade of service in the u.s navy including two deployments in operation enduring freedom and operation inherent resolve I have experience advanced UAP firsthand, and I'm here to voice the concerns of more than 30 commercial air crew and military veterans who have confided their similar encounters with me. In 2014, I was an F-18 Foxtrot pilot in the Navy Fighter Attack Squadron 11, the Red Rippers. I see you making a face, Gonky. Have you ever called yourself an F-18 Foxtrot pilot? Well, no, because he really wasn't one. <laughs> in the seat forever, oh, is he bro. not a pilot? Hey, man. No, he was a pilot. Here. I don't know, but he was a. Is he a Wizzo? Oh, oh, I see what you're saying. Oh, Ooh, I don't know. I have no Does idea anybody ever is. say just Foxtrot? What about the other? Isn't it EF and then A through D? Yes. Yeah, you usually just say F eighteen. Did he say he said yeah. pilot? He said pilot. He didn't say he air said pilot. Yeah, then he's a pilot. Yeah, he's already going to jail. Otherwise, Straight mover, you jail. can. Uh, yeah, you can listen to him, mover. He's a pilot. Okay. And I was stationed at NAS Oceana in Virginia Beach. After upgrades were made to our jet's radar systems, we began detecting unknown objects operating in our airspace. That sounds like just bad radars. <laughs> you make an upgrade and suddenly your things are going wrong. 
I don't. Maybe it sees better. Maybe. Yeah. Or. At first, <laughs> we assumed they were radar errors. But soon, we began hey, to correlate the radar you know. track with multiple onboard sensors, including infrared systems, eventually through visual ID. During a training mission in Warning Area Whiskey 72, 10 miles off the coast of Virginia Beach, two F-18 Super Hornets were split by a UAP. The object, described as a dark gray or a black cube inside of a clear sphere, came within 50 feet of the lead aircraft and was estimated to be 5 to 15 feet in diameter. The mission commander terminated the flight immediately and returned base. Our squadron submitted a safety report, but there was no official acknowledgement of the incident and no further mechanism to report the sightings. Soon, these encounters became so frequent that aircrew would discuss the risk of UAP as part of their regular pre-flight briefs. Okay, hold on a second. In 2014, we were at 204. Did we ever brief UAPs? No, I don't think the UAPs were in the hoot at. Not with your like radar, that. they weren't. No, 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 not with the <laughs> we have no APG idea. 65, picture clean. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, one back. Maltese you, you made a face. Maltese cross. Yeah, you, you made a face there. So, I mean, we're already into now, this. Hold I'm on. not discrediting. Wombat, Wombat's the only, well, no, you did a couple times, but Wombat, you're the only one that's flown off of Virginia, the Nutter Space of Virginia mm -hmm. Beach, right? Yeah. Probably yeah. just a the year. Ride. When's the last time you flew out there? I mean, it was that was 2014. He's talking about. Yeah, so I was out there yeah. before that. I was 20 2010. So, did you ever see any beers with? No, no, sorry, did not. Mover, when were you there in the rag? 2012, 2012, and then we went back in 2013. It was when we did the deck cert. So, and did you fly out there? A, I flew no not spheres. for the deck cert. I, I flew around, but uh, there were no UAPs. So nothing, but nothing was going. Yeah, nothing no. was going on. They weren't talking about. No. Maybe ET hadn't arrived yet. Maybe could be, but hmm. Fravor, as we'll see in a minute, was predating that. So, oh. well, ET, I don't know. So what Coast, I got out of that was, yeah, I don't know. Man. What I got out of that was the guy. Being a foxtrot pilot, he didn't, you know, <laughs> most six likely, sets of eyes, six sets. That's, that's a lot of eyeballs. That's a lot there. of eyeballs. You get six. Yeah. Anyways, um, man, it's a AESA, and I know they continually upgrade it, and it's it's, it's a pretty good radar. Um, I don't know. I mean, I, who who knows? He, I mean, he said they eventually correlated from what what they saw on the radar to probably clear. And he said eyeballs. So who knows? I mean, but he's not the only one with testimony. 50 feet is, I mean, that's, that is, we the size of a super hornet. Collision is imminent. It's the length of, well, yeah, but you, he you said the object, he thought the object was five to 15 foot in size. 15 feet. Yeah. yeah that's not very big. That's like a balloon. No, yeah, that's not big. Like a children's I mean, balloon. And here's, the, unless, I mean, if that thing was stationary, I don't, I mean, it would be like extremely momentary. Like that My thing would just fly past you. If you're doing Is like this just knots. me? Because I'm I, I, I was hoping it was not just me. Uh, <sighs> Gonky's Gonky. audio is definitely screwed up. <laughs> What's wrong with my audio? It's attached to the uh, rest of your technology. Yeah, something else is happening. It it keeps skipping like the you know the old uh, recorders you know where the thing goes off the thing. What do they call that? Go Help me out, Doug. What's it called? Clipping. No, you know, the old... No! Oh, you mean like he's at the end of his tape? <laughs> yeah, like he's... Yeah. No, the... the he's at the, the end thing, of the record. And the, the vinyl, the skipping. vinyl record, yes. The re skipping. record is skipping, yes. Thank gotcha. you. God, wow. I'm, I'm, I'm like I'm having a stroke. Am I skipping? Yes. yes, you are. You are skipping. But and only when you get really animated and excited, which is good. Yeah, please stay calm. Yeah. So Sir, what you were making fun of me for last last time is now you. Maybe it is you. While we wait, uh, I've already seen this. Nick says, a theory that is being suppressed out there are that these so-called aliens are actually demonic encounters and the spaceships are just top secret aircraft. Thoughts? That is scarier than the idea that it's aliens. So I would hope it's Correct. aliens yeah. over yeah. whatever yeah, that is. That sounds Aliens cool. over demons. Unless it's that, uh, what, what was that show on Netflix about Satan? He was kind of a cool guy. Lucifer. 
Unless it's mm. Lucifer. That guy seemed like he liked to party. I'm going to still um, stick with. Yeah. yeah. There we go. Views yeah. don't represent anybody, but. Yeah. Um, and I don't, we're not trying to break this whole thing apart. This is more of a commentary slash reaction slash pure sarcasm and ridicule like we always do. But um, one of the things, just going back to the origins of this hearing, my whole issue with this is I am now a conspiracy theorist because I question aliens. Like, I never thought I was going to be in a situation where questioning the government narrative that there might be aliens actually makes me the conspiracy theorist. It's a crazy world we live in. You just got to hang on. I, I, I can't world. even wrap my noggin around that. That's the... Gonky, do you want to try talking again? <laughs> we miss you. How about uh, now? now? And he's gone. <laughs> no. Now... How about now? Now, now you're in a Godzilla movie where your mouth moves and you, the words come out about 20 seconds later. I like the Godzilla background behind thing. you, though. You guys continue. I'm gonna, I'm gonna troubleshoot. You, uh, plug, I'm sure that'll plug make the it better. Ethernet in. Yeah. Oh anyway, God. Wombat, as I, as I told you, it was probably gonna just be me and you <laughs> at some point. But what do you think, Wombat? So I remember when I was a kid, my dad took me to see the movie fire in the sky. You remember that movie? No, but every alien movie when I was a kid scared the hell out of me. It scared me, but it like, and I remember leaving the theater and my dad was like, I was like, dad, are they, are they real? And he's like, he's like, it's a huge universe. I mean, the chances of something out there, it'd be hard to say no. And I believe that all the way up until my current age, when the government told me there was aliens and now I don't believe them anymore. Because that's a good point. I mean, that's a good point. If the government's telling you. Yeah, it's not aliens. What are the government's telling me it is? What are they trying not to tell you is the real question. What is what is the hey, look over here? Because the reality is, if this were so super squirrel secret, which we'll get into in a minute, because there's a lot to unpack when they start talking about this. But if it were, they're playing really dumb. There's a lot of incompetence going on or it's just theater because all this stuff would be behind closed doors and they would have stopped it. Like as soon as the Senator goes, Hey, how about this? And they go, Whoa, 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 Whoa. We don't talk about that. We first mm -hmm. rule of fight club is we don't talk about mm -hmm. fight club. Let's go to the vault. Not, Hey, this guy doesn't have the clearance. We already looked into this, whatever. We're we'll on get TV. Let's keep it going. Like that's yeah, not how let's this just works. Ask stuff publicly. Yeah. A guy who's just, who has to refer to his news nation interview like oh hey remember the news nation thing i did two weeks ago before i did this that's yeah. the one you need to talk about gonk are you back dude what's going on uh, you tell me so it's i've cycled it. it's i've cycled everything did the old viper reset on it works like a champ now i think it's wombat man i never have any problems until me. he comes on moving on uh mr grush has an opening Sorry. statement we will listen to Mr. Chairman, uh, ranking members and congressmen, uh, thank you. I'm happy to be here. This is an important issue, and I'm grateful for your time. My name is David Charles Grush. I was an intelligence officer for 14 years, in the, both in the U.S. Air Force, uh, both active duty Air National Guard and Reserve, at the rank of major, and most recently from 2021 to 2025, or excuse me, 2023, uh, at the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency, NGA, uh, at the GS-15 civilian level, which is uh, the military is living in the future here. Colonel. Time travel. My testimony is based on information I've been given aliens. by individuals with a long-standing track record of Long legitimacy and, and service to this country. Just like Many of whom gone, also right. have shared compelling evidence in the form of photography, official documentation, and classified oral testimony to myself and many my very Photography and oral. Uh, so he doesn't have any firsthand knowledge of anything. Just what he's been. Does any intelligence officer ever have any firsthand? Touche. Touche. Easy. Okay. Well, I'm that. kidding. Touché. Put up the disclaimer. It's fine. Touché. They know. Actually, this is, this is the part here. Uh, when we I get to Commander Fravor, um, I, I'm not like Grush strikes me as a little bit more like an intelligence guy. So I think, I mean, he's, he's a little off. You're kind of like, eh, but in general, seems like a cool dude. Sure. I mean, well, Intel guys are usually pretty cool. As you let it play, I mean, there's a lot of questions. He's like, well, I can't answer that here. I can't answer that here. It's like, well, that's true. <laughs> then why are okay. you? Okay. Yeah. Right. Uh, as you know, my name is David Fravor. I'm retired. All right. So, so this is 
Commander Fravor, uh, and Gonky, you pointed out earlier that the Tic Tac video, the Nimitz encounters that we did was not, he didn't take that, right? So everything he's talking about was his firsthand VID. Yeah, so I listened to this earlier, and that's that's what he said. He said they came back, told the next wave, and they went out and got the the FLIR footage. But that I've listened correct. to a lot of, I've listened, yeah, okay. I've listened to quite a bit of his, uh, his talk about this, just because it's, it's very interesting. But yeah. 100% sure the aliens don't want Gonky to be heard. No. Which is funny because government. Gonky wasn't the one on the Nimitz. Gonky is actually the most pro Are alien you Nimitz person when this in happened? this chat. Were you really? Yes, sir. Oh, boy. You, Wombat's minute, about to go to Nimitz? Congress. Yeah. Oh. He was in 41. I was in the Wall Bangers. Yeah. There's a whole book called Treason Flight on this. Go buy it. Let's, was that wait, shameless? Does Treason Flight have aliens now? I don't know. Go buy the book. Hold on. There we go. <laughs> TRMatson.com. Go buy a book. Seriously, re tell us more. What, what's there to tell yeah. you? It was Start talking. It happened and it was off the coast of San Diego. And it was a big deal on the ship, obviously, as you can imagine. And then it got covered up very, 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 very quickly on the ship. Okay. Very quickly. Matt. Hypothetically speaking, you. since at the time, how about now? Oh. Did you see aliens? That's what he wants to know. He's trying to ask you, hypothetically, did you encounter aliens or see them on that big domey radar thing you got spinning above your noggin? Go. I can neither confirm nor deny that. Oh, come on. Ah, come dude. on. <laughs> Is this how your book is written too? Is it just nothing but just frustration? I think, I think you should know because you've read it, right? Or at least I have read it. Read it. Okay. So there was no aliens that I read no, about. No, no. It was a. It was a. It was a big deal on the ship. It was very much so. <laughs> what? Rocky's what? going to be afraid to speak at this entire episode I know. because I know. he doesn't know if his thing's going to work or not. You didn't you know I was on the Nimitz with Forty One, and I did. That was Kag I did I, dude, I did know you were on the Nimitz. I just I thought, we I thought that was before your time. It was right around the same time. Yeah, it was all the same time. Kag Eleven, One Seventeen. Were you on that workup? I think so. Yeah, it's been a while, man. But yeah, I think so. Were you airborne? No. I was not. Oh. So, did you know who was airborne? Of course, dude. There's uh, like three pilots in an E2 squadron. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. No, I don't. I don't think we had anything uh, airborne at the time. So it was. It was. It was weird, man. I, I was real new think. to the squadron, <laughs> um, but I do remember. Uh, I, I do remember it was a big deal, and it was it was frowned upon to talk about very quickly on the ship. Because they just didn't know what they were dealing with. Um, now, people that further on have their theories of what they were dealing with. And I'm not trying to knock Farva. Like, he's awesome. Love that dude. Great dude. Like, he was a great pilot. It's a great pilot. Um, Still is. That's what it is. Sorry. Um, I mean, he was. And, I mean, the, the pilots of 41 were fantastic. The air wing was fantastic. There's nothing negative to say about any of that. Um but you can imagine back in was that 2004 or five whatever it was to be saying this stuff like dude that's you're really hanging it out there man especially in naval aviation where it's like you don't go outside your little your little window and say things like that so i give him a lot of credit um cone as well she was the, the other one um and uh which i'm sure you've seen her interviews as well and, uh, but yeah, it was, there was wow. very, it, it sparked and then quieted down very quickly and was, was moved on. And then that was that. So. Did you see the tapes in real time? No, I did not. because I was an E2 pilot and I did not care anything about <laughs> tapes. I cared Jeez. about my room and working out and Dinner. sliders and that's All right. about it. yeah well, I didn't let's care get back to intel tapes 
Well, let's see I what mean, the man has to say. Yeah. Let's see so what the man has to say about, about that. I hired commander in the United States Navy. In 2004, I was a commanding officer of Strike Fighter Squadron 41, the world famous Black Aces. We were attached to Carrier Wing 11, stationed on board the USS Nimitz, and had begun a two month workup cycle off the coast of California. On this day, we were scheduled for a 2v2 air to air training with the USS Princeton as our control. When we launched off Nimitz, my wingman was joining up. We were told that the training was going to be suspended and we were, doing, were going to proceed with real world tasking. As we proceeded to the west, the air controller was counting down the range to an object that we were going to, and we were unaware of what we were going to see when we arrived. <coughs> there, uh, the controller told us that these objects uh, had been observed for over two weeks, coming down from over 80,000 feet, rapidly descending to 20,000 feet, hanging out for hours, and then going straight back up. For those who don't realize, above 80,000 feet is space. We arrived at the location at approximately 20,000 feet in a controller called Merge Plot, which means that our radar blip was now in the same resolution cell as the contact. As we looked around, we noticed that we saw some white water off our right side. It's important to note that the weather on this day was as close to perfect as you could ask for off the coast of San Diego. Clear skies, light winds, calm seas, no white caps from waves. So the white water stood out in a large blue ocean. All four of us, because we were in F-18F, so we had pilots and Wizzo in the back seat, Looked down a small, saw a white tic-tac object with a longitudinal axis pointing north-south and moving very abruptly over the water like a ping-pong ball. There were no rotors, no rotor wash, or any sign of visible control surfaces like wings. As we started clockwise towards the object, my wizard and I decided to go down and take a closer look with the other aircraft staying in high cover to observe both us and the tic-tac. We proceeded around the circle about 90 degrees from the start of our descent and the object, ob object suddenly shifted its longitudinal axis, aligned it with my aircraft, and began to climb. We continued down another 270 degrees, nose low, where the tic tac, or we considered 270 degrees to where, the, and we went nose low to where the tic tac would have been. Our altitude at this point was about 15,000 feet, and the tic tac was about 12,000. As we pulled nose onto the object within about a half mile of it, it rapidly accelerated in front of us and disappeared. Our wingmen, roughly 8,000 feet above us, lost contact also. We immediately turned back to see where the white water was at, and it was gone also. So as we started to turn back towards the east, the controller came up and said, sir, you're not going to believe this, but that thing is at your cat point, roughly 60 miles away in less than a minute. You can calculate the speed. We returned to Nimitz. We were taking off our gear. We were talking to one of my crews that was getting ready to launch. We mentioned it to them, and they went out and luckily got the video that you see, that 90-second video. What you don't see is the radar tape that was never released, and we don't know where it's at, of the active jamming that the object put on an APG-73 radar, and I can get into modes later if you're interested. We're not. What is shocking to us is that the incident was never investigated, none of my crew were ever questioned, tapes were never taken, and after a couple days, it turned into a great story with friends. All right, that Wombat, that's what so, you were just talking about. Well, and that's the thing. So I didn't remember the exact timeline, I'll be honest with you. This was, it happened before I got to the wall bangers. That was their workups prior to the deployment. People in the chat have mentioned the whole um, carrier special. That was the workup they did, the carrier special on PBS, which is notorious for the pitching deck episode and all that, um, which I think Farve is in that as well. Um, and that's when I joined the wall bangers. But it was very much, you know, I'd heard the stories from the guys that were there. Um, and it was very much, like he said, it, it turned into like, whatever that is what it is like there was nothing and it was actually years later when he started talking out that i was like oh holy crap that's that's what so he released the tape right he's the one that actually released the fleer i don't know later Honestly, for the like new york that. times maybe Listen, yeah, I, I, I i thought there were some the like, two main ones were him and cone right those are the two that have been interviewed like i don't have any of the wizzos ever been interviewed i haven't seen it I haven't. Okay. So a hundred percent of these encounters have been F super Hornet F models hmm. so far. No, right? Well, no, I mean right? here in Florida, right mover single seat. Well, I'm talking that's on this hearing. So I'm far. Talking, oh. yeah, yeah. I'm not talking what, who knows what about what I'm talking from this hearing. A hundred percent of this is super Hornets. Well, in the Navy and aliens defense. But Charlie's not finding any of this crap. Let's be honest. <laughs> no. I mean, They're going on, after man. the lowest hanging fruit, yeah. man. Exactly. Like, like yes. I mean, like, come on. Okay. We, like, all right. Yeah. Come on. Dude. All right. One hundred. What do you think about the job? water? Yeah, the water. There's a lot of conspiracy <laughs> theories with that, isn't there? Yeah. If you listen Atlantis. to him on the Rogan. 
if you listen to him on the Rogan podcast, they expand quite a bit on the water stuff. But Gonky, I mean, don't promote there, another it's, podcast. It's our podcast, dude. Yeah, this is yeah. us. I don't think you have to promote Joe Rogan. No offense. <laughs> yeah. People, yeah. people know I don't who want he is. getting our viewers. Who's, I mean, yeah. come Ooh. on, man. We were almost famous, and then Rogan took oh. all our views. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Damn it. Um, the thing just say it. Like, isn't yeah, there, like and it. I don't I I'm not saying I've heard this. I'm not saying that I buy it. Oh boy. Thing, but well, then you're isn't ready there for a conspiracy Congress. theory that there's like a whole under San Clemente, like base underwater type thing down there, or the Catalina Islands or something. Isn't there's that a where whole Cobra, mu- Cobra Commander hangs out underwater. <laughs> but there's a whole thing that supposedly yeah. that's what people think. So I mean, okay, okay, all right. Well, moving on. Uh, yeah, back to the to this. Oh, yes, it was. This is for any one of you, based on based off of each of your experiences and observations. Do you believe UAPs pose a potential threat to our national security? Yes, and here's why. The, the technology that we faced was far superior than anything that we had, and you could put that anywhere. If you, if you had one, you captured one, you reverse engineered it, you got it to work, you're talking something that can go into space, go someplace, drop down in a matter of seconds, do whatever it wants, and leave, and there's nothing we can do about it. Nothing. Okay. You the other you two. Well, I would also like to add, from a commercial aviation and military aviation perspective, we deal with uncertainty in our operating space as a matter of uh, of our protection, professional actions. Identifying friend from foe is is very important to us, uh, and so when we have unidentified targets and we continue to ignore those due to a stigma or a fear of what it could be, that's an opening that our adversaries can take advantage of. And so, will you just for the public? Hold on a second. So. Why do they have to be a threat? They could be good aliens. Could be. Just send up the welcome wagon like we did in uh, Independence Day. I don't. Well, I are mean, good aliens as much fun to talk about though? Yeah, I would prefer true. to think that they are good aliens that want to help us, and that it's not a threat. <laughs> well, if they're smarter than us, they know that we need help because they have looked at our. That's culture what I'm saying. Like, I mean, <laughs> maybe they come in and and give Wombat a new Mustang. I don't know. <laughs> I don't need to do this. Good. Thanks. Easy mover. Uh, Easy. Yeah, speaking of, uh, <laughs> Wretched Rob says, when is Wombat getting gonky and movers decorator? Where is the potty chair, dude? What are you talking about? I'm in a... Thanks, Rob. Well, first uh, of all, Rob, I have a <laughs> child. <laughs> I'd love to read your books, Rob. So let's talk about... No, who's wow. doing hey, things. settle down. He's talking Rob's about... a friend of the... I know. He's talking about... I've got a picture... <laughs> It is the E yeah. two. I mean, that's yeah. like okay. That counts as like three airplanes. Keep it focused. Keep it focused. I mean, <laughs> to an un- unadvanced civilization, the E two is a UFO. It's a flying saucer. Oh, we used to tell yeah. people that at air shows. Actually, <laughs> that was one of our. Okay. We would take the E two mean- air shows and said that it would come off and go out and do its thing and come back. People are really gullible this- on stuff. I loved it. This is. It's like a bad movie where we're in front of Congress going, well, they're a threat because we don't know. It's like you're always yelling at the screen going, well, don't shoot them just yet. Let's figure out well, what their intentions are. Here, here's the thing, man. If these officials really wanted to know, this entire event would be in a skiff. A hundred percent. Like right. this entire well, event would be yeah. in a in a secure area if and there would be no, you know. Well, and I have a hard time believing that conversation hasn't happened in a skiff at some level. They say it does. They actually talked about there was a a, a subcommittee before the subcommittee. And then after the subcommittee, they didn't go in the vault because, well, I don't know. Uh, I mean, it's I'm sure this stuff is briefed. I hope it's briefed. And then the other thing that we're not talking about here, and maybe it'll come up and I don't want to, I'm not, listen, I'm not passing judgment. I give all these guys a lot of credit to come out and talk about whatever they think they saw. That's not an easy thing to do. We all know that because we've lived in the community where, you know, you put your head down and shut up and just become one of everybody. I give them a ton of credit for them. They are there. Well, at least Farva's a great pilot. I can't speak for the other guys. Don't know. Um, But is there nobody, has anybody brought up the fact that it, it's something we had that they didn't know about. I mean, they do later on, okay. uh, later on, one of the 
officials there asks about, is there anything that we have or somebody would have? And I, th- I think I that's mean, when Fravor yeah. says, no, that, that performance is beyond the, can't say it, like the metal, metallurgy or whatever. Um, uh, yeah. We don't have components that can handle that kind of speed and acceleration. That's actually the, the, the segue. It says this right here. Is this beyond our technology? It's right there now. you go. Right there. So, I'm good at this. Record again, once, once again, um, just uh, briefly, uh, just either describe or note that aircraft that we witnessed, particularly by the 30 folks that you're working with, are essentially outside the scope of anything that we know of today and the technology we have today. Mr. Graves, Mr. Fravor. Yes, uh, the objects that are being seen by commercial pilots are uh, performing maneuvers that are unexplainable due to our current understanding of our technology and our capabilities as a country. And that applies for the military as well. Mr. 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 Fervor? Yeah, I concur with that. We have nothing that can stop in midair and go the other direction, nor do we have anything that can, like in our situation, come down from space, hang out for three hours and go back up. Thank you. My last question, and, so, and sometimes you, I know you, some, you have also said some of these answers in the past, but we're trying to get them on the public record as well, which is really important. Mr. Gresh, finally, do you believe that our government is in possession of UAPs? Uh, absolutely, based on interviewing uh, over 40 witnesses over four years. And, and, and where? I know the exact locations, and, and those locations were provided to the Inspector Area General <laughs> and some of which to the Intelligence Committees. I actually had the people with the firsthand knowledge um, provide a protected disclosure to the Inspector General. Mr. Thank Graves. You. Hold on. Before we get to... Oh, that's, that's this Again, question. Again, I'd like know to know, um, how do you know that these were not our aircraft? Some of the behaviors that we saw in a working area, we would see these objects... Uh, being at 0.0 Mach, that's zero airspeed, over certain pieces of the ground. So what that means, just like a river, if you throw a bobber in, it's gonna float downstream. These objects were staying completely stationary in category four hurricane winds. These same objects would then accelerate to supersonic speeds, 1.1, 1.2 Mach, uh, and they would do so in very erratic and, and quick behaviors that we don't, I don't have an explanation for. Okay, have you spoken to um, commercial and military pilots um, They've seen these off of our East Coast. I have. Okay. Um, Mr. Fravor, I noticed that um, um, in the Tic Tac video, uh, it's Tic Tac like the candy, not Tic Tac like guy. the uh, Chinese communist uh, app. app. That's correct. Yes, sir. I just want to make that because <laughs> my good. daughter uh, corrected me on that and called me a boomer. And say, hey, Boomer, and I said, no, baby, it's Tic Tac like the candy. You're going to have to just look it up. Okay, it's in the Geneva Convention. Look it up. What do we think about that? <laughs> All those things that were just said. I'm, I'm curious about hurricane force winds. Why are yeah, they that, flying in that? I would also fly erratically if I had just flown <laughs> in hurricane force winds, just so we're clear. <laughs> Especially if I just hovered in hurricane force winds, I would immediately try to get out of them and then probably fly fairly erratically. But I'm not. Well, I mean, the theme from everybody apparently who's seen these things on radar is the erratic movement or no movement uh, with like lots of winds aloft, right? So how is it staying there? So I mean, that's the that's the question. So my question is, therefore, how how are they verifying this? Because radar, no matter what, in a electronic attack environment, is unreliable. So if there's any kind of trons being troned, it, it's unreliable. I mean, it's just like saying, well, my radar showed this thing, you know, was zero to a million miles an hour. Well, of course it did because it wasn't reading anything. It wasn't, you know, my but, sheriff's radar does that sometimes. I mean, that's playing devil's advocate, though, that like they've claimed they've seen such things, right? Did they see it at the same time, though? I mean, it's I, one thing to see it, to see something on the radar. And then eventually correlate something where it was and go, well, that's the same thing versus well, seeing it on the radar at the same time you're seeing it do the crazy things that you're seeing it do. Well, typically, I mean, if you see anything, do- I mean, if you see anything airborne, it's either ATC calls it out for you to start looking or you see it on radar first. And then you once it gets within you know, visual range, you start looking for it. You know what I'm saying? Like very rarely are you just flying along. And it's like, oh, <laughs> what was that? When you're in the warning areas. A lot of times you're, you know, no control at all. Yeah, but you're sanitizing. You're talking about, right? But what I'm saying is, you, I don't know. When I most of the time, like my eyeballs are cued onto whatever my radar is seeing. It's not like I'm just looking out there for 
Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Big to small. So that, that's all I'm saying is um, that's probably what they're doing. Cause you just sanitize your flight path. At least that's what I used to do. <laughs> and then if I saw anything, I was like, Hey, what's that? And then I would start training my eyeball on it, but which sounds like what these guys were doing, try to get the oh, radar sure. AT FLIR If they have it, Wizzo, you know, whatever. Right. But my, my question is though, you know, the, were they looking at the radar, saw the thing, and then eventually saw it with their eyeballs? You know, I think that's what the they were said. vectored on, at least with Farva. I think they were vectored on from the ship, saw it visually. Yeah. And then when the second wave went out, they got it on radar and recorded or got something on radar and recorded. I don't know. To answer your question, Mover, I, I've never heard where a single or ship of aircraft got it on radar big to small, got visual, watched what was happening and correlated that's my, it that's, to the movement. That's my question the is the radar. correlation because we know radars can do wonky things, especially when they're new. You know, I mean, there's all kinds well, of examples of upgraded jets. And old. Doing I mean, things. you should have seen me in the yeah. Hornet. Oof. Well, that's what I'm saying. I mean, there I've seen radars do some weird things and it's not, yeah. oh God, the aliens so. are here. It's, oh, well, this thing's, I mean, okay, code three. Code well, like Fravor said, so they had it on radar which is what cued the AT FLIR to look at it. And then when he tried to lock it, that's when it kicked the radar off. But the, the Wizzo was able to keep the FLIR on the target because it'd be awfully hard to just put the FLIR just scan randomly out in front of you and find a TikTok. But an EA pod will do the same thing, though. You do this, you do yeah. that with it. Any, any EA pod will do the same thing. It'll kick the radar off and, oh, look, the FLIRs, you know, I'm locked. I mean, that's, that doesn't, it doesn't give me proof of anything. It's not saying, well, you know, it's it just goes to the unidentified part of this. That's but all. usually the pods attached to a plane. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I mean, I, I uh, a plane, a drone. They saw something. Yeah. That's for sure. The whole thing. Yeah. What gets me? And it's is unidentified. Like, like so me, like me and Wanda has, like we've done that entire evolution of Comp Two X, and been out in that airspace stuff, and like. There's nothing a that Fravor in that airspace. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing that Fravor says that I'm like, that's weird. Yeah, yeah. I mean, other than the fact that there's well, a flying I mean, eight, not out there, going but to eighty thousand feet. Yeah, I think that's weird. <laughs> but but the but the just how the events unfolded and then what sure, he 100%. did, like like that's how I was trained. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, so I, I don't. There's I nothing just think there's a lot of Trons out there, man. And sure, I agree. Oh, and, that, eyeball, and in that airspace, there's a lot of Trons. A yeah. lot there's of There's just trons. so much stuff that can make sensors do so many different things, that, uh, including ground stuff, that you're just like, eh, okay. That's, well, all, I, that's I, all I'm but, saying. Yeah. I, I do. I, I'm, uh, I'm at a yeah. loss. I don't, I'm, I'm on yeah, the fence on this one. Yeah. Nick says, uh, off subject question to you guys, you know, anybody that's pooped or peed themselves during a long flight because they could not hold it. Yes. I don't know why. Yeah. No. I mean, really? No, I, you no. never had a helmet bag in your air wing or no, I, I heard, uh, I heard, yeah. but we, we were trained. Uh, oh, yeah. Were you? Lot man <laughs> would like to know Wombat. Were you there when they filmed the carrier documentary since commander, commander Fravor was thanks mod featured? man. Yes, yeah, I was there. You. I was there. Uh, Little Towards Trill says, if the technology Thanks, is advanced sir. enough, it would not help. Yes, thank you. If we captured it, imagine a caveman finding a flat screen. How is he supposed to use it? There's no electricity and no TV signals. That's true, but we do have reverse engineering. I mean, that's we do have people. That's their whole job is reverse engineering. Usually enemy tech, but... Right. Um, you're right. It could be like a dog watching TV. You don't, I mean, we don't know how much more advanced it is. Thank you, Mark. Appreciate that. Um, D Sue says, I think we're seeing a drip drip disclosure instead of a rip the band aid off. As we will continue, I think there's a lot of band aid ripping in this thing. This is not just, oh, yeah. Uh, not that. And then, uh, Fennell, old Brian says, we need some alien tech in our race cars. Chevy and Bimmers really need some help. And Adam says, thank yeah. you, Brian. Uh, these aliens are super intelligent. They're only screwing with hornets and not fighters. super hornets. Super hornets. Super hornets at that. Two yeah. seat. Two seat. Two seat. Super hornets. Uh, like, these uh, guys are clueless. <laughs> and uh, little trail. Maybe they were trying to help them a little bit. 
Just trying Come to get Yonki back on step. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I that's a great question. Step. Would they be trying to make contact or would they be observing or are they alien billionaires that are in a sub that they told them not to do and they're in here, you know, and they, that that's hilarious. why they keep crashing. They're like, come onto this ship and you can watch these dumb humans fly around in their technological planes. They think they're so advanced. Like that would be awesome. I love that story the best. It is aliens yeah. that are just laughing at us. That's it's, my favorite. It's, it's alien space tourism. Exactly. I love and it. And they're, they're going, all right, back to what astonished, astonished you about the flight Mr. Favor. Favor. What, what favor, astonished sir? you Not favor. the most about the, the flight tic -tac. capabilities tic -tac. of these Tic Tac, very briefly? Uh, the performance. Absolute performance. It was... And, and you're, you're not aware of any other objects that anybody in the world has in this world that has those capabilities. No, I think it's far beyond actually our material science that we currently possess. Are you aware of <laughs> any other reconnaissance platforms that have tracked or recorded the Tic Tac's maneuvers, maybe the NORAD system or any of the others? I am not. Okay. Mr. Gr Are we allowed to say Tic Tac? Is that not a trademark infringement, like saying Kleenex? Who knows? That's a, that's a trade name. But He's a boomer, man. I, say whatever he wants. I yeah. love how they're asking this guy it happened 20 years ago and it's like do you know of any current tech that may or may not have resembled this and it's like he's not a darpa he doesn't know what 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 we have he just knows he was a super hornet guy that saw something weird yeah and he did like and i believe him in that yeah that's all yeah so um so ryan says in your opinion is more training better such as stall spin well this is or is more technology such as AOA indicators. Both. I think both. What do you think, Wombat? You're very much in training these days. Both. And as the resident upset recovery subject matter expert of the group, uh, both. You need to train it, but technology never hurts. But if you don't understand the technology, then it's pointless. You need yeah. both. Awesome. 100%. Well, thank you, Ryan, for that that question. Back to, uh, yeah, back to the hearing here. Gosh. Thank you for being here, brother. Thank you all very much. Um, have you faced any retaliation or reprisals for any of your testimony or anything on these lines? Yeah, uh, I have to be careful what I say in detail because there is an open uh, whistleblower reprisal investigation on my behalf. Oh, and I don't want to compromise that investigation <sighs> by providing anything that may Been uh, there. <laughs> I'll provide somebody information, but <laughs> who has I mean, come yeah, on. this is the most um, realistic part of this whole thing. Some of the tactics 100%. used to what is that? Um, Who's getting an email? professionally is, and, no and personally, to be quite frank. Right. So do you have any personal the knowledge aliens. of people who have been harmed or injured in there efforts to cover up or conceal these extraterrestrial technology? Yes. Personally. Have you heard have you, anyone been murdered? That you would think that you know of or have heard of, I guess. I have to be right now? careful asking that question. I directed people you, with that knowledge to the appropriate authorities. You, Maybe in a, um, if we could get it, get in a um, confidential area skiff, we could talk about that. But unfortunately, um, really we have not access to the skiff. And uh, so that turned out to not be. They weren't directly denied access. They were basically saying he doesn't have the clearance that we need to talk about what we need to talk about. So we need to fix that before they're not denying the, the subcommittee because the subcommittee doesn't even need clearance. Right. They are as long as they have the need to know through the subcommittee, they are allowed really? access to these. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Because they're elected representatives about how things work. Yeah. Good but I mean, <laughs> Okay, sorry. Do I believe that people got hurt because they tried to cover up stuff? Yes. Well, so is he talking about are they covered up because of the aliens? Gonky, what's going on with your mic, man? Nothing. He's heavy breathing. He's really no. Breathing. He's really into does it. Does it sound crystal clear right now? It does. May or may like, not have some neighbor noise going on. <laughs> and that's very unfortunate in this in this scenario. Mr. Sorry. Favor. Do you believe Favor. that you witnessed an additional object under the water in relation to your encounter? Water. I will say we did not see an object. There was something there to cause the white water. And when we turned around, it was gone. So there was something there that obviously moved. 
Okay, it was it was not the same object though that you were you were looking at, correct? No, we actually joked that the Tic Tac was communicating with something when we came back, and could, because That's of whitewater disappeared. Not a funny joke at all. No. Uh, we were in, in another instance. We're told about the capabilities of of a jamming during viewing of some when there were some people chasing some of these objects. Did you experience any of that jamming or interrupting your radar or weapon system? My crew that launched after we landed experienced significant jamming to the APG-73 radar, which was what we had on board, which is a mechanically scanned, very high-end uh, system prior to the APG-79. And yes, it did pretty much everything you could do, range, velocity, aspect, mm. and then it <clears throat> spit the lock, and the targeting pod is passive. That's where we were able to get the video. Um, are you aware of Boy, that sounds familiar. Having done that at Comp 2Xs a lot, done that to Super Hornets and Hornets. So the Tic Tac was the F-18A from... Tic Tac was me. That it was, was, uh, it was, it was me Mover. at the Comp 2X. <laughs> this is the big with, reveal. That's amazing. Yeah. Dude, Jamming, you're going to get 500,000 like that. Proning, Mover yeah, was turns the out Mover is the Tic alien. That, that email is uh, Congress summoning you. Yes, yeah, exactly. Well, hold on. For legal uh -oh. reasons, this is a joke. It's totally. It's a <laughs> but, I, but I'm serious. There are though. no jokes. I mean, yeah, you're right. We carry a jammer pod that could yeah, do that. We carry yeah. this stuff. Yeah. We're doing this at Comp 2Xs. There's a lot of, there's other aircraft doing that. There's a lot going on. There's a lot of Trons out there. But you didn't look like a Tic Tac. <laughs> You didn't look like it. I mean, you could we fold the wings up on the old talking. A model. It'd be a little more tic tac -y. I, know I know, I know you're a hopeless romantic dude, but we got to have the scientific method here, right? We have to, we have to say, you know, most realistic, least realistic. Is most realistic? Are the aliens here, or is it a Comp Two X with a lot of jammers out there in the space? But, but well, one battle tell you, Comp Two X is pretty much like the crawling before you walk. Like it's, I was there. No, I've, I've done them as the, Reddit. I know, but what I'm saying is it's like, it's not full on. So they're, yeah. they're not going to have the, it's not gonna be trons all the time no. like at level 11. No, no, I agree. But I'm just saying there, are, there may be plausible explanations for some of the things that were observed. And that's why I say, can you correlate them and then provide data? That's all. I just, I just think we should provide data. Wombat, you look like you're trying to either hold in something, or like I said at the beginning, the previous question. From being a kid <laughs> until now, I believed in aliens. I stopped believing as soon as the government told me there was aliens. Yeah. He's not telling yeah. us all he saw in the Hawkeye. I know it. Lil Trill <laughs> says it's probably alien teenagers who stole Dad's spaceship. <laughs> Valid. Yeah. Have you guys ever seen or worked with SBX one? What is that? I don't know what that is. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. What Sorry, that Nick. Is. That's, that's above my my pay grade. Okay, continuing with. This still goes on. We're still talking about this. God. Oh, it gets good, man. Oh, uh, does Maybe it? Our enemies that have that yeah. capability. No. Are there no. common characteristics to the UAPs that have been cited by different pilots? And can you describe? Yes, cancer wombat. Yeah. What the convergence I was, I of descriptions is. The guy. I wasn't saying anything. Uh, we were primarily seeing dark gray or black cubes inside of a clear sphere. I'm sorry, dark gray or black cubes? Yes, well, inside of a clear sphere, where the apex or tips of the cube were touching the inside of that sphere. And that was primarily what was being reported when we were able to gain a visual tally of these objects. And that occurred over almost eight years. And as far as I know, it still occurred. Uh, Mr. Grush, what, what about you? What was your experience after you came forward? Well, uh, it's only been about two months or so, so I guess my experience has been yeah, overwhelming support from uh, former colleagues of mine well, that have you know, privately nation. messaged me, and, and I do appreciate that. Uh, but I, I do have knowledge of um, active planned uh, reprisal activity against myself and other colleagues, and it's very, uh, very upsetting to me. Coming from where? Uh, certain senior leadership at no. previous agencies I was associated with. <laughs> Not so my shocked face. But I can provide more details in a closed environment. Okay. Well, I, I hope you understand that um, there would be bipartisan rejection of any attempt uh, to vilify. See, okay, hold on. And then this goes to the... It, uh, they are doing this due to disservice, and he's doing himself a disservice. If, if this is the whistleblower thing, right, if he's got... Hey, you guys need to look at this or else the world's going to end. 
parading him out is not going to make this better. Nope. None of this is helpful. Way worse. I way just worse. that For I have heartburn with that. Because he yeah. does a News Nation interview and then goes in front of Congress and they they do this big thing and then they ask him about the reprisal and it's like, look, they should be going, hey, how's this investigation going? Have we finished the reprisal investigation? Because we need to find out the legitimacy of this before we go public. That's yeah. that's a good point. Because if it turns out it's something yeah. else, it it yeah. devalues the whole thing. It devalues right. Farba, it devalues everybody. So right. they. 100% know that he's got a reprisal investigation going on because he's obviously told them before he's made protected yep. communications. Why are we going public right now when it's ongoing? Distraction. Wombat, they're uh, another Wombat, conspiracy. They would never distract us. The conspiracy no. is the conspiracy. <laughs> never. Uh, all right. So Mr. Roll it, those people. And, and what is your general interpretation um, of these phenomena, or what is your do -rag? current thinking of trying to make sense of them? Well, I'll say, you know, I'm not like a UFO fanatic. It's not, Wrong. it's not me. But I will tell you, you that now. what we saw with four sets of eyes over a five-minute period, that's, that's too too still, Six. there's nothing. We had nothing <laughs> close to it. It was, it was amazing to see. I told my buddy I wanted to fly it, but. That's it's a fighter pilot an answer right there. Or Mr. Graves. Uh, yeah. I, I go with that. Like, if he's saying I would, I'd want to fly this thing, that's a fighter pilot answer. But I can't really buy into he's been on all the alien shows and he's in front of Congress and now he's not a UFO guy. You're a UFO guy at this point. Because if you're well, not I mean, a UFO guy, you, you never talk to anybody about this after it happened. Dude, he's a UFO guy because he saw a UFO. I mean, you would be too. I'm right. I'm not saying I'm just saying let's call it what it is. At this point, you are you are a believer. You are a UFO guy. That's it. You okay. don't you don't go on the shows if you're not a UFO guy. I'm gonna remember this when you see a UFO and you go to Congress. Just so you know. No, if it'll I'm be all that. They won't talk about it by then. They don't care. No, I'm, <laughs> only the first with person every, that comes out. Right. The, second else, person is, the, boat. the second person who lands an Airbus on the Hudson River doesn't even get a book deal. Right. It's only the first person, period. So you're too late, mover. You got to think of something new. 15 minutes. Uh, man. It's the truth. Flying spaghetti monster. Um, can you please explain to me Hello, in Luna. detail the event that occurred at Vandenberg Air Force Puppy Base? Dog. Certainly. Certainly. Uh, in the 2003 time frame, uh, a large group of Boeing contractors were operating near one of the launch facilities at Vandenberg Air Force Base when they observed a very large 100-yard sided uh, red square. Let's use metric. Uh, approach How big is that? from <laughs> the ocean and hover at low altitude over one of the launch facilities. Um, this object remained for about 45 seconds or so before darting off over the mountains. Um, there was a similar event within 24 hours later in the evening. Uh, this was a morning event. Uh, I believe 8.45 in the morning, later in the evening, post-sunset, uh, there were uh, reports of other sightings on base, uh, including some aggressive behaviors. Uh, these objects were approaching some of the security guards at rapid speeds uh, before darting off. Uh, and this is information that was received through one of She's the uh, witnesses enough. that has approached left. me at Americans for Safe Aerospace. Was this documented in any official form, whether it was a police blotter? Yes, they had uh, official documentation. Uh, no. and the cops would be the like, civil matters. Uh, We're not right now. Okay, and then um, another question on follow up referencing the gimbal video go fast incident. Um, can you just clarify? Because to our understanding, the footage was actually cut off at a certain point. But what happens at the end of that video, just for those Americans specifically there that are wanting to know about the rest of that footage? Certainly. The uh, there was some uncertainty or um, you know, instability with the object. It, it seemed to rock a bit. Uh, and that's the last. Uh, last I had seen of the video. Much of the data that I would recommend be analyzed would consist of radar data uh, that would pr provide precise kinematics on the object as well as the fleet of objects that were operating nearby. Hey, you... uh, if the UFOs are rocking, don't come a-knocking. So what do we think about that, Gonky? Uh, well, that was, you know, the 100-yard or meter large thing. Hey, right? It's, it's like a football. It's, yeah, like like coming at security guards i was trying to imagine that um i can't 300 feet yeah like that's a 747 pretty sure right, isn't that yeah i mean pretty sure they got like cameras and stuff at vandenberg that's like a no nope, it's an air force base I doubt it. 
doubt it. Outward facing, yeah, at the at the gates for sure. I mean, security uh, there. I know is yeah. probably decent. Well, that's bigger than ten by fifteen, right? So the one of them was fifteen feet. The other, this one's three hundred feet. Yeah. So they're shrinking yeah, so their technology over the years. As mothership well. is getting no, bigger the, as we go. Why would the mothership? One was, one was like their security. Hawkeye. You know, one was yeah. like their Hornet. I don't know. Probably, the Hawkeye, I, I think, yeah, that's probably why the Hawkeye was lost. <laughs> the Hawkeye one was like, what are we doing? Is this, is this work still going on? Like, Am I just, still supposed to be pissing off these random airmen at the gate? I, yeah, I just, I'm going to do I a thought, flyby. Is your radar down? I'm doing flybys. This is, I mean, I don't know why. Yeah. I, I thought that part of the whole testimony was, uh, I don't know. I, it was all hearsay to me. You know, it's like the whole, he didn't yeah. see any of it. He just heard about it. I mean, now I've heard about it. Can I go to Congress? You know, I, I don't Correct. know. That part of it, I was like, he's on his way to Congress right now. No, the subpoena is en route. Oh, Keep man. me yeah. that be? No. Oh no, is that not mover and gawky? All, and all I'm saying is like, it's like I said, it's it's just something that he heard. You know, like I'm more interested in what the well, other two say. Here's a direct witness. Tom says, I know I saw what looked like a translucent Captain America, trademark, shield in March 2019 over Baltimore area with a witness. Well, if it's over Baltimore, people are shooting at it. So that's, true. <laughs> that's war. That's true. Yeah. That's... It looked just like one of the release videos, but not the Tic Tac freak me out. Well, Tom, yeah. There's I... a lot of things you see that, I mean, I went out in my backyard one night and saw things that I'm like, whoa. I mean, it... Just be, I think we need to differentiate something you cannot identify and Boy, something that is a threat from another world. Those are two Again, very they could different be friends. Things. Why could are be we friendly. saying threats? Why are they? I mean, if I'm just not saying. friend, why friend shaped? I mean, I would I, think a box and a translucent tube is a friend. We hope. <laughs> Are we going back to what we talked about this before we the, came on? This is the first <laughs> uh, Dominic says, we'll know they're Dominic. reverse engineering when we see a flying cube with a rotodome. Revix flight. Oh, man. That'd yeah. Awesome. It'll look like Fat Amy. Uh, well, an actual go. alien uh, says, every time a Biden scandal goes public, uh, UFO gets its <laughs> wings. Uh, again, views do not represent anything with the DOD. Uh, I love, that's awesome. Legendary says, I believe it's an undiscovered government snow, advanced civilization living in the deep oceans and under the ice in Antarctica. They're conspiring to create a fake alien invasion to reenact world government. Uh -oh. Aquaman was super nice when he finally realized. Um, Maybe it's like Pacific house. Rim. Okay. What if it's Atlantic Rim? True. Did you see that movie? Did you see the Mover Ruins movies on that? That guy got the Medal of it. Honor and a Huey. It's hard. Yep. It's hard to watch. All right, here's your boy right here. here you we have go. direct knowledge. We've spoken people with direct Elon knowledge Muskowitz. that this imagery applies to crash sites, crash crash imagery. I can't discuss that in an open session. Okay. Uh, do you have any information that the U.S. government is involved in a disinformation campaign to deny the existence? Uh, of certain disinformation UAPs campaign and, and everything. I can't go beyond what I've already stated publicly in my News Nation interview because uh, it touches other sensitivities. That's it right okay. there. Special. So we, dude, I got heartburn with the News Nation thing, right? So we went on News Nation and now we're in front of publicly and in, in front of Congress. It just doesn't sit right, man. Intel That's guys. All. Intel guys, I just, man. I just, he's a GS 15 though. He knows better. Like if this is the thing and I get it, you don't feel heard. You feel like the only way is to go on news nation, which I'm not sure which channel that's even on, <laughs> but the, the only way is to be on a, a cable news network versus an actual, let the IEG do their thing first. Right. Which may, maybe not. I don't know. I mean, I, I've seen that before, too. Well, access programs cover this information, and how is it possible that they have evaded oversight for so long? See, that's a stupid question. Special access programs, which I I, I loathe to even say those words Yellow in a light. sentence. Yeah. yeah the, Yellow you, if you're light. asking these questions, I mean, this guy should know better. It's like, hey, we should go, go to the vault. Why are you asking stuff? Because the answer is going to be... Can't talk about it. Uh, I do know the names. Once again, I can't discuss that publicly and, and how they've evaded oversight. I, 
In a close setting, I can tell you the specific tradecraft use. All right. When, did, when do you say think that. those programs began and nope. who authorized them? I just told you the answer. I don't. I do know a lot of that information, but that's something I can't discuss publicly because of sensitivity. All right. Is. How much? Again, so why are we in this situation? Why are we having this a conversation in a skiff? <laughs> Correct. I mean, if yeah. you want to really why are, know. Why are, why why did, what they should have done was have this privately. Not a which distraction I'm, in a skiff. Oh, well, like if this were legit, everybody would need to know and clearance would be in the back and they go, Hey, we already knew about this. Oh, cool. Okay. Well, let's, let's see if this is a real problem because you're, you're, you're saying either no one knows or everyone knows. So what's the conspiracy? Is the government incompetent and doesn't know that the aliens are doing the alien things or is the government incompetent and they're hiding it from the American public because I think the moral of the story is the government is incompetent. Ah, there it is. <laughs> they play Taxpayer the Taxpayer money has been invested yeah, in these programs. The <laughs> knowledge. Thank you. I mean, we know we know we we audit the Pentagon every year and I've been here 5 years and they failed the dad gum thing every year. This is shocking standard. Uh, lose over a billion dollars a year, we think. And I've told we lose it? Or do we maybe just... sixty percent of their assets are unaccounted for, whatever the heck that the means. Fifty thousand dollars on the hammer, twenty thousand dollars on the jail for that kind of crap. <laughs> So tell me. Yeah, I know when I um I'm, I'm a dollar <laughs> off of my DTS travel voucher, I get hammered, but uh it seems that's like true. it doesn't work the that other way. That makes him legit. That's a true statement. dollars worth of stuff on eBay now you get a call from the IRS. So Mm -hmm. They wouldn't let me leave the last yeah, one until I paid six dollars in your question. Uh, the specific corporations I did provide uh, to the committees in specific divisions, and uh, I spent eleven and a half hours with both Brando. Intel committees. I'm going to take. Wait, he just says that he spent eleven and a half hours with both Intel committees. He's already done this, so they already know these answers, and they're asking questions. Yeah, I get the feeling that this is just a uh, theater. Uh, to specific instances around the Phoenix Valley because that's where I I live. And Mr. In '97, we typical had the famous politician. Phoenix Can you talk about case. my? I don't know if any of you are familiar with that? Yeah, enough about this. Let's yeah. talk about me. Uh, there were there were two <laughs> things that went along with that, and the explanation was military training range off Luke yeah. in the Barry Goldwater range. Yeah, because they were dropping Lu two flares. Know anything different other than the official explanation of those lights? No. Only what's in the public vernacular about it. That was outside the scope of my duties. You know why? I used to do this over Avon Park, Lake Placid. I would, would be capping. I would just be popping flares in a circle just to see if I could get the news to be aliens the next day. Because I was just so bored. Speaking in the a lot about your... <laughs> I mean, I guess the Navy For guys are penises. Is, uh, Dude, you just crushed so, a whole bunch of people's dreams, Mover. They're like, I know. There's like half of Central Florida that's like, I saw the aliens. I and it's Mover it. doing chaff, flare, chaff, flare, <laughs> chaff, flare, low, out. Son of a. Sorry. <laughs> now what do I do? Uh, You've yeah, said yeah. that the U.S. In has intact space spacecraft. You said that the government has alien spacecraft. bodies or alien species. Have you seen? Have you been have probed you, have or you have seen you probed the spacecraft? Anyone? I have to be careful to describe what I've seen uh, firsthand and not in this environment. But I, I could answer that question behind behind closed doors. Yeah. And have you seen any of the bodies? Somebody close these doors. That's something I've I've not uh, witnessed myself. Okay. And so, with that being said, you know, and the other other statement that has been made that was intriguing to me because, and it's intriguing because. My, my view has been that we are billions of light years away from any, any other system. And the concept that an alien species that's technologically advanced enough to travel billions of light years gets here and somehow uh, is incompetent enough to not uh -huh. survive Earth uh -huh. or crashes is there are the billionaires. something that I find a little bit well, you don't send your varsity squad With that squad being said, first. you have mentioned that there's interdimensional p potential. We do. Could you expound on that? <laughs> Is that I a crash on the first question, and you know, I'm here as a fact witness and expert, but I, I will give you a, uh, a theoretical framework, at least to work off, to kind of espouse uh, crashes. What happened to the girl uh, Regardless in the of uh, you know, your level of sentience, right? You know, planes crash, cars crash. N number of sorties, what, however high, a small percentage are going to end in you know mission failure, if you will, as we say in the, in the Air Force. Uh, and then in terms of 
uh, multi-dimensionality, that kind of thing. The, the framework uh, that I'm familiar with, for example, is something called the holographic principle. Uh, both uh, it's, it derives itself from general relativity and uh, quantum mechanics. And that is, if you want to imagine uh, 3D objects <laughs> such as yourself casting a shadow onto a 2D surface, uh, that's the holographic principle. So you can be projected, quasi-projected from higher dimensional space to lower dimensional. It's a scientific Nerd. trope that you can actually cross, <laughs> literally, I'm as far lost. as I understand, but there's probably... I literally just re-entered every Intel brief I was ever in. in documentation that Everyone. That's what's occurring. Uh, only a theory. theoretical framework discussion. Yes. Okay. Only what I've read on Twitter where they all talk about this stuff, like, which... Could you simplify that for me? Yeah. Just a little, what the I hell need is that talking about? D zeros, my friend. He's, he's playing 4D chess when we're all in 2D <laughs> space. Um, oh. Tim says, if the Princeton was controlled in the tic-tac-toe thing, why haven't those tapes come out showing some object coming down from 80,000 feet? Well, Tim, that because stuff probably is... Yeah, it's probably in a skiff. I mean... Or you know, it doesn't it just where this whole thing it. should have been. They have no reason to save it 20 years later. No. So, yeah. uh, but you have to believe if they saw something like that, they would have saved it. They would have skiffed it up and it's put of course. on the If, yeah, cause that, course. if, if they saw that and I mean, okay, let's believe it. Right, Cause you're worried it's the can... enemy. Yeah. Right. So oh, you're like, is Whoa. like, we're going to, let's just, yeah, this away. It's not going to ever be released. I mean, even when they release stuff, they don't release stuff. They release the stuff they want. Like, how is this not distraction? It's obvious to me. Like, it has nothing <laughs> to do with important laptops or anything like that. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Mm -hmm. Whoa. Not your laptop. You save those tapes. A not real important yours. laptop. Gonkies, uh... <laughs> Question, what are trans? Oh, trons. Is it mm. clutter, gremlin, is gonky an alien spy? Trons are electrons, so uh, they're the things that make fighter pilots have girls. Yeah, we just we it's slang. Stuff. Yeah, it's it's electrons. Uh, either we use it as kind of like or co-channel interference from the radar. Uh, you can have all kinds of interference. It's just stuff that's out there interfering with our ability to kill people and break their things. Nerd chaff. Uh, the actual alien says, I wanted to believe, but then the government said aliens were real. Shaq. <laughs> yeah, Shaq. pretty much. That's the only way to ruin Santa Claus for me is to have the Congress come out yeah. with Ocasio-Cortez and say there might be a Santa Claus. And I'm like, well, so Darn much safe that. and effective. Aliens are real. What's not to, what's not, to not believe? <laughs> uh, this one's from Wombat. What do y'all think about Sunday's race in Darlington? Oh, I didn't even know there was a race in Darlington, so I don't know. But a Mustang won. Well, that would know he doesn't have a Mustang. He'll tell you. That's true. Not a Go. Mustang guy myself, <laughs> but I've heard they're uh, good cars. Dominic says, maybe no skiffs so the stuff can go on public record. And oh. then, and then. Here's the thing, Dominic. Like, I, I, I don't discount what Fravor is saying, because like I said, I... I can put myself in his shoes and nothing 100%. to me, 100%. nothing to me. And I know, I know his reputation as well. 100%. Cause I was a Hornet guy when he was the skipper and Fantastic I just can't, guy. yeah, I just can't imagine him making this up. I, nope. I just like, there's something. That's happens. Just, that's right. I just think happened. there's a lot, a lot going on. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. There's a right. lot something of extraneous. Happened. We don't stuff. know what it was. Right. Uh, David says, every time I see Thanks, a televised, David. and thank you, David, uh, congressional hearing, I'm scared that some of these people are in office, vote responsibly. Um, <laughs> Just some of them? Yeah. Thanks, David. All right, anyway, thank you, David. That's awesome. So back, back to the show. This one's near and dear to our heart, Gonky. I'm aware of. Several months ago, my office oh, yeah. received a protected disclosure from Eglin Air was Force you, Base Gonky? indicating that there was a UAP incident that required my attention. I saw it was probably me in a T-38. That That's what they're like. Hey, it's a four-ship of 38. It's lost. Burchett and Congresswoman <laughs> Luna. Uh, we asked to see Lunabell. any of the evidence that had been taken by flight crew in this endeavor and to observe any radar signature uh, as long as, to, as well as to meet with the flight crew. We were not afforded access to all of the flight crew. And initially, no. were we were busy? not afforded access to images and to radar. Thereafter, we had... Uh, 
bit of a discussion about how authorities flow in the United States of America, <laughs> and we did see the image. And we did meet with one member of the flight crew who took the image. The image was of something that uh, I am not able to attach to any human capability, either from the United States or from any of our adversaries. And I'm somewhat informed on the matter, having served on the Armed Services Committee for seven years, having served on the committee that oversees DARPA and advanced technologies for several years. Um, when we spoke with the flight crew, and when he showed us the photo that he'd taken, I asked why the video wasn't engaged, why we didn't have a FLIR system that worked. Here's what he said. They were out on a test mission that day over the Gulf of Mexico. And when you're on a test mission, you're supposed to have clear airspace, not supposed to be anything that shows up. And they saw a sequence of four craft in a clear diamond formation for which there is uh, a radar sequence that I and I alone have observed in the United States Congress. One of the pilots goes to check out that diamond formation and sees a large floating, what I can only describe as an orb, again, like I said, not of any human capability that I'm, that I'm aware of. And when he approached, he said that his radar went down, he said that his FLIR system malfunctioned, and that he had to manually take this image um, from one of With the lenses, what? and it was not automatic, automated uh, in collection, as you what would typically lens? see in a test mission. So uh, I guess I'll start with Sounds Commander like Fravor. Test mission. In, how should we think about the fact that this craft that was approached by our pilot uh, had the capability of disarming a number of the sensor and collection systems on that craft? Well, I think this goes to that national security side, and you can go back through history of things showing up at certain areas and disabling our capabilities, which is disheartening. And for us, I mean, like I said, it, it completely disabled the radar on the aircraft when it tried to do it. And the only way we could see it is passively, which is how he got that image. So I think that's a, that's a concern on what are these doing, not only how do they operate, but their capabilities inside to do things like this. And, and how should we think about four craft moving in a very clear formation, equidistant from one another um, in a diamond? In all of the phenomenon, perhaps, Mr. Grave, that you've analyzed, um, have we ever seen multiple craft in a, in a single formation? I have one particular case, and that was uh, during the gimbal incident. Um, the recording on the AT FLIR system shows a single object that rotates. Um, you hear the pilots refer to a, a fleet of objects that is not visible on the FLIR system, and, and that was something that I witnessed during the debrief as part of the radar data on the situational awareness page. I would like to add, however, Congressman, uh, there's a small, uh, small bit of uh, uh, anger, I would say, I would feel that those pilots are still uh, facing that difficulty in reporting this topic, and they don't have the tools to be able to mitigate this issue. They just need to go it on just news goes nation. to show how serious this is and why this is such an important issue for our pilots and for our nation. It was stated explicitly to me by these test pilots that if you have a U of AP experience, the best thing you can do for your career is forget it and not tell anyone because any type of reporting, either above the surface or below the surface, uh, does have a perceived consequence to these people. And that is a culture we must change if we want to get to the truth. Uh, we've all seen So, do, Gonky. Do we, do, oh, well, sorry. well Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> I mean, Mover, you were there. They kind of when all this was, you know, gaining there some were steam, notums. if you will. Right. Yeah, no, there and then notums, remember, there were... We were talking about it, right? We got like an email or like, hey, if you see something, whatever, you know, document it, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, we were all talking about it because they were seeing that stuff like, like gets saying right off the coast of, uh, well, right where we used to fly. So, I mean, I don't, I don't, I can imagine if you tried to come out with something, you know, if you had pictures and stuff, leadership would probably frown upon it. Well, especially since you don't have a camera in the cockpit, so you're taking pictures with your cell That could phone? be not allowed. Frowned upon. Oh, could be, yeah. And you bring up a good point is I wonder what took the pictures that get saw. I wonder if he's talking still about yeah. a targeting pod. I mean, it ha it, I mean, it couldn't, couldn't be it maybe. Well, it, he, said it, he said it didn't work, right? So what else? Yeah. 
cell phone is there yeah i mean but the yeah. I just That's picture tough. a four ship of two foot T 38s trundling across the airspace and they're like transponders what? off. Yeah. Transponders God. off. Like, yeah. Who are these guys? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they're in a diamond formation, you know, and the Lieutenant best part of that figure out the best part of the whole interview is guests describing meeting base security. <laughs> yeah. At the beginning. This yeah. Is what we do. Let me tell you how this is going to work. <laughs> um, all yeah, right, I don't know. What do you think, man? What aircraft was that? They didn't that say. So the the test so, has. Yeah, go ahead. I just I'm not. They have Vipers and Eagles and Strike the Eagles e EX. They have the new EX, or the, I don't so, know if they did it this time. I don't know when it was done, but they had the EX when we were there. Can I hypothetical? Sure. You guys are going. <laughs> You guys are going out on a test mission, okay? You're a test flight, and you're going to take off and run your tests. What if you're not the tester? You're the oh. testee for another program. This could be good to see. Material. Right? I, I see. Think, I totally see what you're I saying. Think they I think they would deconflict the airspace. I don't think. I don't there think would they be, necessarily uh, would have to. I, mean, I understand what so one the biggest saying. issue. Yeah. One of the things that bothers me about all of this is we don't have that. We don't have that. We don't have that technology. We don't have it. You, nobody, nobody knows the whole, the whole program is designed. So to very few know. people know the whole thing. It's true. You got a point. And I will tell you from 20 wonderful years in the military that I have <laughs> nothing bad to say about if you, for an instant, think that two separate entities don't communicate to each other and coordinate with each other. You're a fool because I sat on four deployments where we couldn't even coordinate on the same ship together. <laughs> like let These alone know what the words. air force is doing, what the army's doing, what the missile guys are doing. So I'm not discounting Farva. I think that guy's fantastic. I'm not discounting that Who's he saw Farva? something. Sex. Oh. I'm not discounting any of that. What I'm saying is, and, and it kind of came to me when I'm listening to this guy, it's like, dude, that could have very easily been, you're the person they're testing on and it's somebody else that you don't know about. And that's okay. Uh, I just, and I, it I would, can, yeah, I understand. And it would make where, sense though? to me that From when you where? brought that to Eglin. your command leadership, they're like, mm, mm, because maybe the leadership's read in. And they need to know because they're sending flights up against this. But why wouldn't they tell the congressman? They probably did. Maybe he's not read in the second. Maybe he's not read in. Maybe it's there's things X. that, dude. It's it, yeah. Again, I see what, not saying there's well, not that, aliens. Good... I'm just saying there's a lot of things you can you can explain by just understanding how the military works and doesn't work within itself. Why? Yeah. And okay. it is, I think the average American and God bless you all for thinking this, but the average American thinks, I mean, it's that old joke of like, you know, military grade and a civilian's like, yes. And all of us are like, <laughs> we want civilian grade in the I military. Yeah. Can we get civilian <laughs> grade? I don't, I mean, so again, I'm not saying that's what yeah. this is. I'm not discounting this guy. I'm not trying to Man, discount any point. of these people, but I'm like, dude, there's can be this. There's two sides to every test. Yeah, that's right. Maybe they're testing our equipment to see, hey, maybe, maybe we're te testing our equipment to see what we can see and not see. Because yeah. guess what? We know our capabilities compared to, say, our adversaries' capabilities, right? So if we have other capabilities that can then squash our capabilities and our capabilities are better than our adversaries, well, guess what? I don't have to test it against our adversary now because I know it's going to beat them. I'm just saying. So they're testing they against their the F-35. You know, they did that with the F-35. I mean, when it was first coming out, they would put it in scenarios and not tell anybody. Yeah, they did it with the Raptor too, I think. Yeah, I mean, there was red flags. It's not uncommon. Flags. Like, it's not yeah. uncommon. Like, I don't know why. <sighs> well, the reason why this one's a little weird is because, you know, the whole 80,000 feet surface underwater. That's one comment. 80, 000, one the, these numbers are all radar derived. I, I go back to my original point about the Tron. Yes. There is nothing solid that says these numbers are factual. You know, you saw with your Mark One eyeball. All they saw was weird things happening, 
and something and on the radar. Well, the boat, radar is pretty, the boat radar is pretty tight. It I is. Mean, they've got big but generators. Again, so. But again, who's to say they weren't testing the ships? It's a Comp 2X. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, That's all part of it, man. You uh, flew we, mission profiles as a missile to test the I ship's did. Protection. Right. I did. Um, yes. Adam says it was the cup race at Richmond. Uh, Blue Mustang won with Chris Busher. I didn't watch that race. Richmond's kind of boring to me. But my boy was that... very happy that a Mustang won. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Thank you for that, Adam. Big Killer says y'all should ruin Iron Eagle 3. I think Iron Eagle 3 ruined Iron Eagle 3. Oh, Correct. Yeah. Too yeah. easy. <laughs> Stu says, do you all know retired in 2019 pilot Chris Leto? He was at the hearing. Hmm. No. And I don't want anybody to think I'm not supporting our pilots. No, no. I don't. A hundred percent support. I give them all the credit in the world to come out and talk about this. It is not easy. Yeah. But this is the conversation that would happen in like a ready room among three fighter pilots, is what you're witnessing. Yeah. Basically. A hundred percent. the alien says he means no harm. Donkey enjoys the probes. <laughs> I wonder how many followers I'm gonna lose today Not brian says thanks brian uh brian. is there any circumstance where any of you experienced a sensory illusion with another aircraft where it appeared they did something possible every time i did bfm against nips <laughs> or <laughs> keith beam beamer when i fought those guys like yeah of course yeah of course you see stuff that especially at night especially at night that's oh, back God. to right at On night, goggles are you did kidding any me? of these things happen at night yeah oh dude yeah, you see all yeah, kind of crap night. at night Dude, that you yeah. can't. I had explain. to talk a wingman off trying to join up on the moon at night. Yeah. Like, How many like, times That's not have the tanker, bro? It's over yeah. here. <laughs> or civilian airliners or a shooting star. You're like, is that a Sam launch? You like? Yeah. There's all oh, kind yeah. of stuff happening at night on goggles. I mean, oh, goggles are the worst. And yeah, best, but worst. I didn't. I didn't know. <laughs> That's that. right. <laughs> what personal items would you bring in case of diverting to another base? A credit card. Yep, that's all you need. And just, Credit card. Just take off and leave the next day. Right hopefully, here. you can leave when they refuel it <laughs> and get you back. Like, hopefully, it's like, hey, can you turn this jet? The weather's picked up. Right. Um, you need the, anyway. the fuel card and your personal credit card are the two things you need. Yeah, that's it. That's it. All right. This is the last. Do we want to watch this? What was he doing in San Diego? We know it was a Comp 2X. Do we need to watch this? Uh, do roll, it, man. A You're on a roll. All right. Want to get to the truth. Uh, we've all seen the floating Tic Tac video uh, that you engage with on uh, November 14th, 2004. Can you briefly talk about why you were off the coast of San Diego that day? Yeah, we were at a workup with all the battle groups. So we integrate the ships with the carrier, the air wing with the carrier, and we start working. So we were doing an air-to-air -air defense to hone not only our skills, but those of the USS Princeton when they had been tracking them for two weeks. The problem was that there was never manned aircraft airborne when they were tracking them, and this was the first day, and unfortunately, we were the ones airborne and went and saw it. Oh, Do you remember the weather that day? Or was it cloudy or down. windy or anything out of the ordinary I on the Pacific talked Coast? About this. It was actually, if, if you're familiar with San Diego, it was a perfect day, light winds, no white caps, clear skies, not a cloud. It was, mean? for flying, it was the best. Now, is it true that you saw, in your words, a 40-foot flying TikTok-shaped <laughs> object? TikTok. That's correct. Or for some people dancing. that can't know what a Tic Tac is, it's a giant flying propane tank. There you go. <laughs> Did this object Those are under the radar now. or interfere with your radar or, or the USS Princeton? The Princeton tracked Starting it. Starting to the put Zimis this all together. It, the E2 tracked it. We never saw it on our radars. Our E2 tracked radar it. Has never picked Wombat, it up. did you track the it? The other airplane that Come took on, the video man. did get it on a radar. As soon as it tried to lock <laughs> it, it jammed the radar, spit the lock, and he, he's rapidly switched over to the targeting pod, which you can do in the, uh, the F-18. From what you saw that day and what you've seen on video, did you see any source of propulsion from the flying object, including on any potential th thermal scans from your aircraft? No, there's scans. none. There's no uh, IR plume coming out. Uh, and Chad, who took the video, went through all the EO, which is black and white TV, and the IR modes, and there's no visual signs of propulsion. It's just sitting in space at 20,000 feet. In, in your career, have you ever seen a propulsion system that creates no thermal exhaust? No. Balloons. Can you describe how the aircraft maneuvered? Uh, abruptly, uh, very determinate. It knew exactly what it was doing. It was aware of our presence. And it had acceleration rates. I mean, it went from zero to matching our speed in no time at all. 
Now, if the fastest plane on Earth was trying to do these maneuvers that you saw, would it be capable of doing that? No, not even close. Yeah, Viper could do it. And, and just Have you ever seen object, Wombat do no a fly wings, by an No wings. Now, was the aircraft that you were flying, was it armed? No, never felt threatened at all. Whoa, 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 that's not the question. If, if the aircraft yeah, was, was armed, do you believe that your aircraft or any aircraft question. in possession of the United States could have shot the Tic Tac down? I'd say no, just on the performance, it would have just left in a, in a split second. Also, switchology. It looks it's like a two seat. There's a good chance. There's a problem here that needs further investigation. <laughs> yes. Uh, in your belief, is this this flying tic tac? I mean, is this is it capable of being the product of any other nation on the earth? No, I actually said, like I said earlier, I think it defies current material science and the ability to develop that much propulsion. And I know there's been some physicists have done calculations, which is beyond anything that we have. Well, either the United States has an adversary here in oh this world that we don't know, or we really have some serious investigations to do. I, I really appreciate you being here. Um, is there anything else about the November 14th, 2004 incident that you think is important for this committee to know that you haven't been asked here today? No, I, I, you know, it's, it's been said it's probably the most credible UFO sighting in history based on all the sensors that were tracking it. And then for us to get visual and to go against the naysayers, it, it's something on the screen or whatever. I mean, there's four sets of human eyeballs. We're all very credible. Mover. Of the six of us that were involved in the thing, including the video, every one of us is going to do 20 plus years in the military name. in very responsible positions. So well, what is the most vivid, concrete sighting with the naked eye? Um, of the objects Mighty that you pointed. described before, the so cube-like objects. Certainly, I think the most uh, vivid sighting of that would have been near a, a near midair that we had at the entrance to our working area. One of these objects was uh, completely stationary at the exact entrance uh, to our so working balloon. areas, uh, not only geographically but also at altitude. So it was right where all the jets are going, essentially on the eastern seaboard. Uh, the two aircraft flew within about 50 feet of the object, and that was a, a very so close, close visual sighting. Dude. And you were telling in me one of the that aircraft. they don't have TCAS? I was, not, I was there when the pilot landed. Uh, he canceled the mission after, and I was there. Uh, he was in the ready room with all his gear on, with his uh, mouth open. Just like uh, Top Gun Maverick. I asked Maverick. him what the problem was, and he said he almost hit one of those darn things. He said he was 50 feet away from it? Yes, sir. And his description of the object was consistent with the description you gave us before? A dark gray or a black cube inside of a clear sphere inside of a clear sphere yes um w and w with no self-evident propulsion that doesn't system. sound like a balloon no at wings all. Uh, no ir energy coming no off of the vehicle um nothing tethering it to the ground and that was that was primarily what we were experiencing out there hmm. so a balloon so a box that would transmit well not a balloon i mean I'm not for it or against it, but I mean, Mover and I were in the ready room when like one of our bros told us about one of these things. And I, he's a credible dude. And I mean, I'm I, not saying any of these guys aren't credible, but that, there's, there's a, the way he described I mean, it though, was, was th this thing, this sphere thing was cruising with him at like 450 true. I mean, that's I, no, did the tether Publix of the balloon some... hook to his plane? Is that why? It was... I'm kidding. <laughs> Publix totally makes some really good balloons, man, but they're, they're not going to hold up at those speeds. <laughs> Moving on. Gonky, uh, this one's near and dear to your heart. Our just... aircraft carrier is obsolete. Douglas, Apparently, take it away. We just looked at Yes, <laughs> which they are. So this is what on um, Microsoft News? I lost track. Incredible. There's an, there's an article that's asking the question... Are aircraft air carriers obsolete in light of hypersonic ship killer missiles? The um, article goes on to suggest that maybe people who think so are not paying enough attention, though. Gonky? Yeah. Hey, what's you in your search bar? The... Hold on, hold on. What are, what are you searching for up here? Yikes. Oh, that, was my that was my demonstration of the noisy <laughs> keyboard. <laughs> Don't okay. ask questions so you don't want the answer yeah, to. Uh, what, <laughs> what genre is that that you're I can't even read that. That's just it's a niche. Gonky, you're not going to pass your physical. Gonky, take no. it away. Probably not. No, hey, the whole, I mean, the argument of our carriers viable has been going on for a while. I even think the Air Force, you know, tries to poo-poo on spending billions of dollars on 
on aircraft carriers, which I, I, I'm of the opinion that an aircraft carrier is just like a, it's like an F-18. It's just a pawn in the, in the plan. I mean, if you send a single carrier to fight somebody credible, it's not gonna, it's not gonna turn out too well. But if you send it in there as part of a, a sound layered plan, it has its place. That's my own opinion. Um, but I don't know. Wanda, what do you think, man? You're, uh, I think your, your carrier type is a hundred percent spot on. The aircraft carrier was not designed ever to be its own fighting entity. It is designed to be in a battle group. There's always been threats. Um, I'll take a hypersonic missile that could be fired 2000 miles away over a missile. That's going to hit me when we're going through the Straits of Hormuz. That's right there. I, there's a hell of a lot more yeah. time for them to track the 2000 mile missile and hopefully knock it out of the sky than the one that's I can hawk a loogie onto the enemy territory as we're going through. Like there's always been threats to carriers. That's why it's designed with a battle group and it's not, yeah. they, they serve their purpose. I, like I will say protection. this, um, yeah. the, as far as the carrier, out. as far as the carrier being able to really defend itself, it really depends on the weapons posture of the air defense commander because i had this conversation with him when i was going through my upgrades like hey if some bad guys get past me if i'm doing like def defense for the ship and somebody gets past me and i hand them off to you you know roughly how long does it take for you to do your thing and they blow up and he's like well it depends and he went through all the tiers of you know hey this is free for all to like eh, we're just gonna see what happens and it's are we at general literally quarter? Or is it mid rats? Right. It's very different. Is it lunch? <laughs> right. So it, it really depends on the on the posture of the battle group's air defense. Because I mean, if they're like if they're locked and loaded, it's gonna be real hard to uh, to sink the ship. But if they're, you know, if they're in a pretty relaxed posture, well, right? The Stark, right? Took one in the side. I mean, it. it oh yeah. A surprise is probably the best bet, right? Pearl Harbor. I mean, any. Sure. Surprise is going to be your best bet, but she's ready to go. It's, I think it's going to be tough. So every time I make fun of you, Gonky, the dial up comes back. That's awesome. That's funny. Really? It was, yeah. the, it's the mic. There's something with your so, same thing that Does happened. Is the wife last making week, a so. phone call again? Mom, no, I don't, I don't have, have the internet. <laughs> AO, okay. I've, I've got a couple messages about this. The AOL thing is a joke. I actually have fiber optic internet. Like, I actually have hotmail. <laughs> <laughs> I actually do. <laughs> I know you do. <laughs> uh, what you Brian mean? says, I work at a university in the College of Sciences. We are all pretty skeptical of this is being discussed in the open. Public looks out for aliens. Meanwhile, Skunk Work produces new assets. Hmm. Or distraction. <laughs> yeah. If the government trusts me, maybe you could too. <laughs> John, thank you, Brian. John says, thanks, Gonky. Keeping open mind for reality, your compadre show up as Tokyo Road. <laughs> I will tell you something I've noticed from reading the comments. John thanks, is John. a huge Wombat fan. I will tell you that right now. Go buy oh, Wombat's on. book if you haven't already not. during this chat. Go buy a Wombat Look, book. if they Next pick on, on you, the... Wombat, you know. If they pick on you, they love you. <laughs> yeah. Next on the uh, show... Douglas, are you ready? I am ready. Send it. Hold on, we got to make it on. The <laughs> was yep. it sent? You got that? <laughs> Send it. Yeah, this was mentioned in the chat earlier um, that Northrop Grumman is not going to bid on the next generation air dominance fighter program. So, who does that leave? Boeing and. Yeah, it leaves Boeing um, and Lockheed. So, I. I dove into this a little bit, and it looks like North of Grumman wants to focus all the resources on the bomber they're building, which I don't know a whole lot about because I'm not really a bomber guy. But it looks like a B two, yeah, a smaller like B two, right? So yeah, yeah, they want to make sure that thing is on schedule, on time, you know, no issues. So that's why. But you know, North of Grumman is not. It's not like they're not going to get part of the pie, right? So a lot of people don't know, but like North of Grumman actually builds like the knows the front part of the f-18 so you know all these aerospace giants they all kind of get a piece of the pie but they're not going to be i guess submitting a formal proposal um i think it was this article i was reading i, I don't really agree with the author he was he was trashing the f-22 
as uh, hey, as soon as it came out, it was obsolete, which I don't believe that. I'm, I'm a firm believer yeah. and they didn't build enough of them. And if they, if they could crank them off the assembly line right now, the United yeah. States Air Force would be a lot, a lot, uh, a lot stronger of a force instead of, you know, F-35. But, but yeah, that's why that uh, they're not doing the bid is they, they want to focus on the bomber, which, you know, good on them because you know, delays are expensive. Well, and, and building a, a prototype is expensive too. I mean, the whole yeah. idea that you're going to do a next gen fighter with all the requirements that they're given, you know, I I, I had an engineer uh, from the Air Force that was on who was part of the uh, YF twenty three YF twenty two competition, and there's so much behind the scenes, and you do this, and hey, how about we want this, and let's let's add all these requirements, and then it's like, well, wait a minute, none of these are realistic, and we can't do it, and they're going to spend so much money creating this Out prototype yeah and then may or may not even get it when they maybe see the writing on the wall like hey we can't compete for the whole thing maybe we'll just get these little pieces and and not spend all this money so uh, or but, maybe they're the ones that developed the first alien ship and they're way ahead of all this <laughs> they don't need this maybe they already this is pocket maybe change Maybe they already have. So we're going to move ahead to the voice messages uh, for that. So, Doug, we're not going to talk about the uh, the other thing there. Um, and we got two of them this time. If you ever want to send us something, it's on Spotify. The first Are you one, playing one? I'm, I'm playing. There's two of them, dude. There's oh boy, two okay. Of them. And there's there's one that's like a, from deep within China. Ooh. So, yeah. Check that's this out. That's kind of weird. Ready? And send it. Hello, Mover and Gunky. Long time listener, and first time man. caller. Wow. Your channel is my favorite. Well, second favorite after Grand Thumb. Grand Thumb. So I live in Good China, job. behind the lines. Behind and I want to talk about the Chinese Air Force and the Chinese Navy. They are not what they seem to be. I can tell you that uh, their professionalism is nowhere near the U.S. Navy. It's more of a, I don't know what, what to call it. The thing about the Chinese culture and the military culture is that uh, these people do seem to lack a soul. They are part of the collective group. They can only act as a group. There's no individual. So all there is is a, that he got like at that point. That's the end of the message. So he got executed. That's his what you'd say. Social credit score just went went Done. to zero by the time that one minute message was out. But he makes some Ooh. good points, and it's very fascinating coming from China, right? Of, of what their perspective is of us and of themselves. Uh, Gaki, you spent a lot of time in Asia. Yeah. What do you, well, what? Do you what? Think? Well, what he described was basically communism, right? He said they have no soul. They all operate as, you know, this one one deal. Um, yeah. yeah, that's culture, right? And I think, I mean, we talked about the last show. Like, I think that's what really separates the West, you know, from that mindset is uh, our culture, which I think is changing, not for the good. But um, we're going but, to that. We're trying to become a hive mind. Yeah, which is bad. Um, you know, I flying in Malaysia, I did get a little bit of experience flying like uh, under like MiG-29 control, like how they would do it, which is how the Russians do it, right? And I, I was shocked at uh, at uh, how ineffective it was. At least maybe if I was in a MiG-29, it would have made, made sense. But in an F-18 having been taught to be rather autonomous and being a, being able to, you know, assess the situation and make a decision and go, that was all taken from me. And the things that were being told, you know, I was being told to target and do all these things. I'm like, this is not good. And it, it was not good, but yeah. listening to that message, it's like the guy, you know, he, I credible, I would say, I don't know him. I don't know if he actually knows anything about the Chinese Navy or air force, but, I mean, I, uh, within the realm of, uh, of truth, in my opinion, 
Yeah, I hope we never get to the point where we find out the truth, but mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. you there's there's a lot that we think we know about both sides. Like I think there's a lot they think they know about us and there's a lot we think we know about them and the only way to really find out is the worst possible scenario and something mm -hmm. we want to avoid. Uh cuz nobody wins. It just yep. it's not going to be it's not going to be fun. No. Cool. Well, thanks for that, Ray. I hope you're okay. Yeah, thanks, man. Um, and the next one is from BC. He's here we go. Hey guys, BC here. Uh, I hear a, a lot of banter between you guys from the Navy and the Air Force. Uh, and I was also wondering, is there also a lot of banter between uh, different airframes? For uh, instance, the, uh, the Viber guys versus the Hornet guys and the uh, Fat Amy uh, uh, guys and girls, by the way. Um, is that a thing? And why is that? And is there some kind of top of the food chain airframe? that everyone uh, looks up against and they look down <laughs> on everyone. Uh, love to hear it and uh, very interested in your insights and uh, really enjoyed the show. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I remember the first time I went to Northern Edge. I'll never forget this, this story. So up in Alaska, and it was the first time the Raptors were coming to Northern Edge ever, right? So, so to speak. So all the Viper guys show up, right? And I was like, wow, Viper. I mean, they're it's cool, right? Well, then the Eagle guys roll in and they squash the Viper guys because that's how oh. they act. Well, then now the Raptor guys come in and the Eagle guys aren't used to Nerds. not being at the top of the fighter pilot food chain. And we were all out at this massive restaurant in, in Elmendorf and we paid the waitress to go over to the Raptor table and play this whole thing up. It was the Hawkeye squadron. We paid her extra and she walked over and she goes, and she goes, are, are you guys here for that big exercise? And of course, I mean, picture these Raptor guys, they're, they're out and they're just, yeah. And she goes, oh my God, do you fly that sexy E2 with the, the ditch on top? <laughs> it was the funniest thing to watch those guys, just their egos implode. And like one of them's like, no, we're real fighter pilots. And, and she's like, well, I would do some real things if you flew that plane and walked away. And it just deflated the whole, it was so like, she played it up so good. And I was Perfect. like, awesome. So, awesome. And then we all Viper got guys for doing low transitions. <laughs> so in the E2. Whatever. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh -huh. oh, yeah. Viper. The whole, the whole no, no, no. The whole, the whole exercise got grounded. Oh, because oh. we got into a low transition takeoff competition and the colonel literally, or whoever it was that was in charge of it, literally sat over everybody. And he was like, I knew it was bad when the Hawkeye got involved. We're done. <laughs> no more low transitions. <laughs> I was like, yes. So, well, yeah. I mean, to answer the guy's question, it's basically you have pride in your yeah. work, right? So you're Absolutely. you're pride. You're, you're pr go. Yeah, right. You're proud of your airplane, you know, no matter what it is. I mean, Wombat, you were proud to be a Hawkeye guy when you were. That's why you guys play that joke on the Raptor nerds, right? So, like, <laughs> nerds. It, it's you know, it's kind of like the well, you know because the neighboring... everybody takes things too seriously too. So you have to have a good time with it. Well, yeah, it's a high stress job. I mean, well, and here's the other thing. It's like the Hawkeye is way better than the Raptor. At carrying six people that's a fact it's fine right but but you know what i'm saying like you, way, to, you can, way to know your navy aircraft thanks buddy but, Jesus. But, but you know what i'm saying like it's oh yeah it's, it's it's you know it's subjective and then and like i said man it's just like in sports right the the your the high school team in the neighboring town those guys are nowhere as near as good as you are so it's just it really has to do with just squad and pride airframe pride 100%. and you have to think you're the best or else you would never do the that's, job you're asked to do yeah. Like if you legitimately didn't think you were the best and you climbed into aircraft built by the lowest bidder and got launched off an aircraft carrier, <laughs> you're nuts. by the lowest bidder. I've seen that. <laughs> I've seen that comment <laughs> a lot from the like, because, you know, obviously I've maybe done a few YouTube videos and I, see, I read all the comments. And I see that a lot, especially like when I did the Su-57 thing, because people were like, you'd be shaking in your boots if you saw one in the air. And it's like. I would be the worst fighter pilot in the world if I thought that. Like, I yeah. go up there, if I'm in a jet, I think I'm going yes. to win. 
I think I will use all Every the training time. tactics, techniques, and procedures that I've been trained right to, to do. the fireball. And right I, to the fireball. right to the end. <laughs> well, I will that's keep how we're that thing until the very bitter end. And there's no point where I'm going to go. Well, I'm going to die. I mean, that, you might I, think that way in the back, which we'll get to that not in a minute. Conscious, not conscious. It's but like, dude, you I mean, believe dude, it. Yeah. It, you know, it's like, it's the old joke. It's like, I wasn't, I wasn't defensive. I just wasn't very offensive, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I was slightly well, less that, offensive. Right. Yeah. At that point, Mover, <laughs> we were doing some training in my current job, and there was a story about like a pilot just froze, right? In training, just froze. And I'm like, froze i'm like i'm gonna be the guy that's still trying to fly the airbus when i see the fuselage over there and it's just <laughs> me in the cockpit nothing's attached and i'm like i think i could pull this one off I, yeah. give me a it's chance just a flesh gotta, wound. it's just a flesh I I wound do. i mean that's just how you're bred and i think right. that oozes out to everything else um you know the camaraderie all that i mean it's no different and we all secretly know that you need everybody i mean somebody's got to bring the good golf courses and cold beer I mean, that's the just war the needs Zamboni drivers. I mean, who's going to clear the picture f- for us, the people that actually do the mission? The Eagle guys. That's true. I mean, exactly. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, and, everybody you know, we, has their role. It's just nobody's role is as good as your role. That's all. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. It's like the the old Mel, Mel Brooks movie, Let Them All Go to Hell Except Cave 76. Yeah, that was his <laughs> whole national anthem. Yeah. Uh, anyway, moving on. That was a good one. I, some good stuff good. there. We used to tack our Viper guys used to taxi by the Eagle and go to sec, which would close the nozzle because of the, <laughs> that's funny. Is that, that like you, you did the joke on the carrier deck. I'm sure gonky where you would put the refueling probe out for certain. Personal <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 That was fun. The whole line of fighters and somebody would walk by and just see refueling, probe, refueling, probe, refueling, probe. All right. All right. Well, let's see, <laughs> until the air boss was like, knock it off. Yellow light. Yeah. yeah. Dan, just thank you. Dan. Thanks, Dan. Appreciate for the uh, thing there. All right. And our final topic for this evening, actually, it's not the final, it's the second to final. One of the most important things. So let's get serious. The mental health minute. And uh, I've had to do this a lot lately. Uh, You can use this in your personal life. We use this a lot. We just talked about it, actually. We use this a lot in aviation in general. Compartmentalization. And what does compartmentalization mean? It means forgetting about all the stuff that's not related to the task at hand. It's really a very zen-like thing because you're living in the moment. You're focused on what you're doing right now and not what happened on the ground or what happened you know, earlier in the flight that you messed up, you're focused on what is my current task? Where that can be a problem, though, is if you compartmentalize your entire life and eventually that stuff will bubble up. So there's a balance between healthy compartmentalization where you are using it to focus and be in the present, in the now, and then there's the unhealthy where you're just never dealing with your problems. And I will tell a perfect example of that in my life where... I did not compartmentalize because I had let I had been compartmentalizing so much that I wasn't dealing with stuff and it bubbled up in the jet. And I talked about this, the T-38 thing where I I suddenly felt this like, I don't want to go flying right now. My dogs are going to die. There's all this stuff going on. And I went flying anyway. And I just got this sense of dread like I I don't want to be here. And to your previous point that we were just talking about, the moment you stop believing you're the best pilot in the in the air is the moment you feel your own mortality and the moment you're like, I don't know if I can do this anymore. And that is a scary thing to go to, but it is very difficult to get back from. I mean, it took me, what, a year of working to get back from that place. And it was compartmentalization. You know, one of the things, one of the tools you work through is living in the moment, you know, being present in the now and working on what is my next task versus what's going on extraneously. What do you guys got? Yeah, man. I I mean, (laughs) compartmentalization in the, at least in the flying business is huge. I mean, I, I mean, Wombat, I'll tell you, like, you know, you, you go to work, you got all kinds of, personal stuff going on and then you know your butt hits the seat and it's almost like a switch goes off in your head and you're just like okay now i'm starting the airplane okay now i'm getting my clearance okay now i'm checking everybody in like you just you just yeah. it, it, i mean and that's a result of of, What's next? of a lot of training and and then but but 
you talk about unpacking it, but in the AV in aviation, you know, when you get back, you unpack it all in a debrief, right? So correct. You know, so I mean, you could take that even to your personal life, right? So compartmentalization can help you get through some tough times, but at some point, you're gonna have to deal with it. Yeah, and, and go ahead. Sorry, I was well. I was just gonna say one of the things: if you take an FAA check ride or a military check ride, one of the first things they tell you is don't grade yourself, and do not get hung up on what mistakes you've made because you've got to go. I screwed that up. Noted for the debrief because it'll snowball. And I've done AIB reports. And we've we've gone with fatalities where, unfortunately, the bag of experience ran out because you didn't have that experience to fall back on, and we were compart we weren't compartmentalizing, and we're just like, man, that sucked. I'm gonna hook this ride. Oh God! And next thing you know, it's a mishap versus we could have just debriefed this and been done with it. Sorry, Wombat. Go ahead. No, and and I agree, and I think um, everything you've said is 100 percent true, and I I don't think that it is any different whether you fly airplanes or not. I think this applies to everyday life. Um, and I see it and I've, maybe I've recognized it in aviation and now I can apply it, um, to everything from getting up and feeling overwhelmed with what I have to do that day or getting to work and what I have to do at work or being, you know, here as a husband and a father and all that. And it just, it adds up and it, it constantly adds up and I fall back. And there's a, there's a story that I tell that, um, is the ultimate and it's a little bit lighthearted, but it's a true story that happened to me in T 45s where I was in the back of a, um, a BFM for the student. And, um, we got a um, ECS failure, so we, we lost our pressurization, but the student thought that we had a compressor stall, so he shut the motor off, which is not ideal in a single engine aircraft. Um, and, you know, it relit because it was perfectly fine when he turned it off, so it wasn't a problem. And we knocked off the fight and we flew back and I could tell from the back that he was in his own head. And, you know, this was one of those moments and, you know, I'd, I'd love to talk to this guy again years later, but, you know, I told him, I go, look, let me tell you, and I use this kind of goes to what we were talking about previously about different airframes and different services as I go, do you want to know the difference? I came up on ICS. I go, do you want to know the difference between an Air Force pilot and a Navy pilot? And he goes, uh, yes, sir. And I go, an Air Force pilot forgets his peanut butter and jelly sandwich for his flight. And he's so locked onto that, that he lands gear up. I go, a Navy pilot shuts down his only working motor, but he's expected to go back and fly a perfect landing and be on the ship the first time period case closed. And the kid kind of chuckled and I go, and the last time I checked, you're not trying to get your wings of silver. So show me, you can compartmentalize what you just did and get this plane back to base. And when we, and he did great. And when we land, you know, he looked at me and he goes, I know you got to do a pink sheet and uh, I'll be in the ready room. And I go, there's nothing that me failing on you on this flight is going to teach you more than you already learned. And I didn't fail him. And I, that same thing applies. The Air Force part was obviously a joke. That same thing, though, applies where I've seen friends get themselves into that where they can't compartmentalize. And it doesn't have to just be aviation. It can be life. It could be marriage. It could be kids. It could be your job. And and we get so wrapped into this on our daily life that it's like, you have to be able to go, you know what, what can I control right now in the moment right now? If it's not on that list, I don't care about it right now. I'll get to it. I'm not forgetting it. I'm not pushing it into a box and never touch it again. But right now in this moment, can't deal with it. Period case closed. I have to deal with the things that are going to get me moving forward through this moment. And then I can go back and readdress. I'm going to say on that as an LSO, like part of your job is making sure dudes were and girls, dudes, girls, whatever, uh, were able to compartmentalize and focus. Like yeah, you said, 100%. man, right. Cause the ship thing is kind of hard, but yeah. Yeah. And I've, I've had them talk to me before to help me get, uh, you know, angels in the what? game, get back angels in the game. In right. It's all right. Cougar. I'll keep you right on my wing. <laughs> take you right in buddy and it's different for everybody it's, real. Yonky, so. it's, I mean, it's real. different for everybody um i got in trouble as an lso in in meridian because i had a marine who did fantastic at the field which is the ones we would always worry about right because if they're doing really good at the field yeah. you're like what's going to happen when you go see the real monster out there and his first couple passes perfect and then he got in his own head 
And, and this is where it's important to see and know your friends, your coworkers and all this and see these tendencies in them. And I knew for this Marine, he was a Marine at heart, period, case closed. I mean, K bar in the teeth, that was what he wanted to be. And I came up over tower frequency while he was getting gas. And I said, basically over the frequency, I was like, hey, Marine. And he's like, yes, sir. I'm like, pull your head out of your butt and fly like you know you can fly, period. Literally, the phone rings. I mean, picture initial carrier oh, call. Yeah. Your LSO <laughs> says that the phone rings, and it's the captain of the ship. And he goes, "If that guy flies into the back of my ship, I'm ripping your wings off the, your chest." And I go, "He won't." And he didn't. He flew great because you have to know that, and that's part of being an instructor. That's part of being also, but that's in life too, where we can't be so focused around what's going on here to not see our friends and our counterparts around us. Everybody's going through something and you might be the one that helps somebody else compartmentalize without even realizing it or with realizing it. And, and to that point, Wombat, if it does become too much, don't do it. Correct. You know, there's, there's the other part to that too, both as yourself or your friends in the squadron or whatever, if you see somebody going through something, if you are going through something, don't add to your problems by going and taking a jet airborne that you might have just been better off saying today's just not the day. Let me deal with whatever it is that I cannot compartmentalize. And that's what I did when mm -hmm. all that stuff happened with the T-38. I said, look, I'm off. Give me a give me a week. You know, let me deal with this. And at first person I called you and, and Gonky. You know, I, I, we talked about this, you know, I, yep. I, I lived it and dude, there is nothing worse than when your own mind turns on you because it's your strongest weapon. It is your sure. strongest weapon. And when it is the thing that is keeping you from doing the thing you love, you hate every minute of it. And the only thing that saves you is friends and yourself going, I'm not going to make this worse by putting myself in a dangerous situation. I'm going to raise paw and go, uncle, let's step back and deal with it so uh, so that I'm not overwhelming myself with stuff because there's only there's a limit to how much you can compartmentalize once you reach that limit now you're inside you, your own you head. I agree and you can't you can't see it anymore and one of the things I remember telling you because you had said and, and I don't want to get too personal on this but you had said well this is what I do this is this is who I am and I told you I go mover look at all the great things you've done just with this channel like you are not defined by that jet that jet does not define who you are. It might have been what got people interested initially, but it's not who the real mover is. But when you're in that mo moment, and we've all been there, it manifests itself different ways. But when you're in that moment, you can't see that. It does not matter. And you couldn't see that when I said it, but eventually you did. And that's just the way it is. And that's why looking out for the people around you, whether it's family, friends, your, your brothers and sisters, your the camaraderie, um, people you don't even know. I mean, there's been times where, Things I've said, people are like, man, that really spoke to me. And I'm like, I, I don't, I wasn't literally even speaking to you. You know what I mean? But I'm glad it did because there's too much stuff going on in this world right now. And it's so easy to feel alone. It's the, it's the most bizarre time I've ever lived where we're yeah. connected to everybody, but we're alone. It's bizarre. And it's, it's, you can't, we put so much pressure on ourselves for things that frankly, we can't control anyway so yeah gonky nothing it's hard to follow wombat man once he starts once he Sorry. starts saying yeah. prolific Sorry. stuff very wise stuff but uh he said we're actually... alone but i don't i don't think the alien supporters would like <laughs> maybe well, we're not if they're hostile or not if they're hostile yeah. or not uh and this friendly. is on the same holy cow adamantium thanks, Blade, thank you. Uh, Mover, how much time are you spending as a reserve peace officer? What are your healthy stress coping strategies? Uh, I, I Lately, it's been anywhere between 40 and 70 hours a month. Um, this month's a light month. I think I'm right at 40 hours. Um, but it is exactly what Wombat just said. I, you know, one of the reasons I love doing it so much and I have, like, done as many hours as I, I have is because I picked a shift with a group of guys and, and girls that I love. They are my brothers, sisters. Like, I know they got my back. I know that if something happens, they'll be there. I know that if something happens to me, somebody's gonna come take care of Luna. Like, I know that that band of brothers and sister is there for me. And when things start 
going sideways and I have trouble coping with something, it's the talking it out with the people that have that common interest and that common, like they lived it too. So it's always easier to cope with stuff when you're doing this in a group than it is to do this by yourself. And that's, to me, no matter what you're doing, that's why the squadron brotherhood is such a important thing. That's why the ready room camaraderie is such an important thing is because when you have these shared experiences and you can then connect and not just while you're doing it, but after the fact, when you can connect and say, Hey man, that was messed up. And then throw in the dark humor, throw in the, all the other stuff, you know, that comes with the profession, you know, the, the cop humor, the firefighter humor, the, you know, there the people ask about the, the, the rivalry. Well, there's one with cops and firefighters too, but guess what? We go to one scene together. We're, 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 we're brothers again. You know I mean? No cop is going to let a firefighter suffer just like no firefighter is going to let a cop suffer. It's just, we make fun of each other because that's just part of it. But at the end of the day, we have each other's backs and, you know, I make fun of Wizzos and I have on the past, but I respect well, and appreciate. Fun, Listen, no, no, I mean, but we're all like, we do that because it's fun and it's funny. And yeah, like, you know, by the way, everybody says, where'd you get armed the seat? You're the last flare. And that's from Gonky. Uh, so uh, he needs to take credit for that one. But True. my, my <laughs> point is we are all in this together. And if you can lean on each other, that's how you cope. I mean, that's, that's what it boils down to. Cause once you feel like you're alone on that Island, which I did for a long time, you know, with Dude, everybody what has. happened last that's year, the thing. That's, that's the, the breaking news the is everybody's felt that way. Gonky, I know yeah. damn well you felt that way, even though you don't necessarily want to talk about it and you shouldn't. <laughs> We've all felt that way. Anybody who hasn't felt that way is fooling themselves. That is Lying. life. That is life. And it's the fact that we live in this society where we have to hide that. And we have to hide that vulnerability. We're all so afraid. I mean, I remember you talking me off the ledge before the first book came out where you're like, you got to put it out there. And I'm like, what if people don't like it? Well, guess what? Some people don't. A lot actually don't. But the second <laughs> one's better. Both, both books. So, but it, it we is did. We, it is. we there was ledge talking on both books, sir. But it is what it is, <laughs> and you have to trust in that process. And and I don't know where our society turned into this, where we all think that we have to have everything figured out. Because even the people, I actually I do. Twitter. I blame it on social media. I truly yeah. do blame it on social media because hundred percent. Because the the things that you see on social media and it's all fake. It's well, all TV BS. too, right? Real, so reality shows. People, yes, there are so few people that are honest on social media that show you how it truly is. Um, and that's why I think something like your show stands out, Mover, because you've done that. You've shown the vulnerabilities. You've shown the cockiness. You've shown all of it, right? And it's just, you've shown you. And we sit here and we look at these people on social media and it's like, well, how did he get the six pack? And like, why is he driving a Shelby and how is he a two book off? Wait, no, that's just my account. I'm sorry. I got confused there. But like you see his stuff and it's all BS, man. It's BS. Like I posted a funny thing the other day. I took a screenshot of my phone when my alarm went off for work. I don't know if you guys saw this. It was 3.15 in the morning. I took a screenshot and I was like, never down, never out. And I test. This was all a test, <laughs> right? And somebody, Jeez, people were writing that. me. I was getting multiple messages of like, dude, you're better Jocko than Jocko. And I'm like, no, I'm not. That's what time I have to get up to go to work. Like, that's my job. <laughs> I don't have a choice because they will fire me. It's not motivational. And I told them this. I'm like, don't buy into this crap. And I'm not saying Jock is crap. That's not what I'm saying. Oh, I'm saying, boy. Oh, boy. I'm going to have the people's elbow. Oh, but my point that I'm getting at is try to look through all that fluff. There are people on social media that have a lot of good to give. And we miss that because we're so yeah. focused on either what we think they have or what we want to have if we had their opportunities. It's like, dude, everybody has opportunities and nobody has opportunities. Just go for what you can go for and see where the chips fall. That's it. Yeah. Well, Gonky, I think that's enough for the mental health minute. You got anything else on that one? Mm -mm. All right. I, I, we're Doug, so due to time. Yeah, you're the mental health professional, Douglas. <laughs> Wait, are you asking me about the mental health minute or are you asking me about, about comments? Both. <laughs> mental health minute. I think that um, something that you guys touched on, maybe um, folks didn't realize it because it was so organic, is that that can be taught and that can be trained. And if 
you don't know how to compartmentalize, look into getting trained and getting taught because it can be really valuable. And then the flip side, Mover, you and I have talked about this, you, and you guys all mentioned the same, don't overdo it. Resilience can be its own worst enemy. So know yeah. when to say when. Yeah, yeah, well, I end up doing that. We'll talk about resilience as its own episode, but thanks, Doug, that's uh, good you stuff. Bet. I'll Google uh, what that uh, means. Oh I'm going to, uh, we're going to save the Aussie make them tell you no story for next week because we've gone so far over time. We've got two more <sighs> super chats that I want to get to, and then we'll wrap this up. Uh, John, uh, says, and thank you, John love, Thanks, love John. your content gentlemen. I'd love to see a USMC pilot as a guest first live episode that I've caught. Sorry for being slow. We love, uh, hearing cap go over HD. Um, We've it's got hard to get Marines to know how to work special, computers, though. Right? Special, special Edwards. Special Edwards, who I've interviewed on this channel, and he's helped us with the uh, Folds of Honor Fight for he's Honor awesome. uh, tournament. Yeah. Well, he he told me he would do it, so he's just got to get back from his vacation, and he will be on the show uh, as well. And then uh, Adamantium Blade Comics Collectible Thanks, says, I was a deputy where I was an FTO. Thank you. For many of 15 years, I did it. Panic visited me, and it took a few months to go on top of it. No fun. It's exactly what I was just talking about when you are your own worst enemy. And it, it, it comes down to being in the moment. Being present in the moment is the right answer for all of that. And how you get there is your coping techniques, and you have to figure out what's the root cause. What is causing you to do that? And that's something only some you know talking to a professional, counseling. Uh, that's the only way you can get through it. It really is. Uh, and this is from Plexi. Thank you. You know, Gonky, a side benefit of getting a DCS capable computer would be that you'd also be getting a podcast capable. <laughs> Ooh, look who's dropping the I truth see, I, bombs now. Uh, look, look, it's, uh, yeah. I, I gotta take, I gotta take the truth bomb like a man. We're back to dialogue. Mm. We're back, back on the dialogue. It's getting better. I think he just gets animated. Uh, his his I, mic can't keep up. I don't, I don't think this computer can handle a three way. <laughs> yeah <laughs> i know you could. can't handle the three-way <laughs> yeah, yeah. breaking news uh -oh. Not oh, that there's anything wrong with it's that awesome. <laughs> can't wait for your kids yeah. to watch this one day That'll all right awesome. so uh go check out wombat's book vengeance flight trees in flight oh. buy his books that's the only way we can negotiate his presence on this channel is if you buy a book so please buy a book <laughs> <laughs> uh subscribe to the ready room if you haven't already and thank you all if you want to buy my books please do but i'll probably get in trouble if you do so yeah um, you know what hey support mover buy his books i buy them all yeah, uh, well, there you go good. mover right. now, now you're not self-promoting yeah you're not selling yeah. just put the put the the thing at the bottom again put it doesn't matter on. if you put that that was already yeah. there uh, apparently that's <sighs> maybe this in today's you know, mm, air force. but let's let's end on a happy note yep um what we got? We got anything happy to say? It's it's nine o'clock somewhere. It's ten o'clock in Wombat Land. Jeez, dude. I'm tired, man. I've been up since three fifteen. I'm not yeah, kidding. Me too. Three twenty. Well, well, you should. We, I'm already ahead of you then. See. Here's the happy note, dude. I hit four hundred thousand subscribers this weekend. I want to thank awesome. all of you. That is awesome. That have been a part of this channel, whether you joined recently or you joined five years ago when I started this journey because Gonky told me to. <laughs> um gonky thank you for you're welcome talking me into doing this it's been a hell of a ride we've had ups we've had downs but i wouldn't trade any of the experiences for anything i am honored that that many people want to hear what we have to say and i hope that we can continue and continue helping people because you know even though some people say it's it's shameless self-promotion i do believe that a lot of good has been done and yeah. i'm hopeful that we can continue to do a lot of good uh, with make them tell you no, with charity support, with just it's sharing stories and having a good time. Yep, hundred percent. Awesome, Wombat. Congrats thank you for joining us thousand. tonight, dude. Thanks for having Thanks, me. Thanks, Wombat. Yeah. It's fun. I think we'll I'll be down to, to four in, followers hey, after this. Hey, is we'll over have to go into a skiff and you have to tell me all about it. The, <laughs> the flying saucer thing. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next thank time. You guys. Take Have care. a good night.